Rodgers, Fountain, and Ruggeroli. Nick, number 77, the first guy there, and they're up over two dozen sacks for the season. Tell you, this is just a lot of great effort up front, and quite frankly, I don't think you can fault Utah State's offensive line. This was great coverage downfield because Snyder had some time to throw the ball. He just couldn't find an open receiver, and boy, did he get sworn. Louis Aguiar, a senior, averaging 40 yards a kick in his own end zone. Anthony Williams to receive it. It's a sort of a slow end over end kick. And Williams at his own 47 will get across midfield and fail to reach the 45 yard line of Utah State. But good field position for the Bulldogs of Fresno who lead it 7 0, better than five and a half in. science and in research. We're here for the children. Hi, I'm Huey Honda. Hey, all dealers talk about their cars, but it's high time we cars started talking about our car dealers. Me, I'm with the Northern California Honda dealers, real leaders. And guess what? They just received more than 2,000 classy new 89 Hondas, America's number one selling import car. And your Honda dealer plans to sell them all this month to say number one. Honda, the quality car at a great price. Right now at your Northern California Honda dealer. <laughs> We wanted a Bud Light! Bud Light! If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Now go get pizza. Bud Light. Because oh, everything else is just a light. Homecoming weekend in Fresno. The folks were up out of their seats early on that 61-yard interception return for a touchdown by James Williams. Now we'll get a look at the Bulldogs at their own 37-yard line. There was a penalty on the punt return. The pass is swung out to the left to Dwight Pickens. Pickens coming in, averaging 17 yards a catch. And so the Bulldogs, who thought they were across midfield, end up back in their own territory as they operate with a 7-0 lead. Pickens makes the catch that time on number 47, Lewis Brown, the Utah State cornerback. Another youngster, a freshman in that secondary back there. Converted offensive player. He's going to have his work cut out for him tonight. Well, the top four guys on their depth chart in the secondary are two freshmen and two sophomores. The give is to the deep man. Good yardage up toward midfield. And now we go back to Tim Brando. Bob, the Bayou Bengals from Baton Rouge, LSU, essentially got nine points from their special teams, leading by a point. Hunter Jeff Nelson of Kentucky wisely takes the safety with two and a half minutes to play. But then Kentucky in their last gasp, Glenn Poor, throwing out of his own end zone, picked off by Greg Jackson. That sealed the victory for LSU. They move to four and two and remain in the top 20 after a 15-12 victory. Back to Bob. All right, Tim, and there will be some shuffling in the top 20 this week based on what happened there tonight and this afternoon. Kelly Skipper, the tailback. He goes only 5'6", if that tall. 180 pounds, a senior out of Eugene, Oregon, whose father is an assistant coach, Jim, with the New Orleans Saints. And he is a well-schooled youngster. When he came to school here at Fresno State, Jim Sweeney said years ago that he was the best prepared football player he'd ever seen coming out of high school. And actually, the running backs here for Fresno State really have to like what's happening this season, running the ball more than they have in a long time and running it effectively And Kelly Skipper leading the way. Second down and nine, just short of midfield. A deep drop for Barsotti. Lots of time for the big freshman who whips it over everybody's head. It looked like Dwight Pickens was a little confused on the route downfield. He cut to the sideline as the ball stayed pretty much over the hash mark on its way to an incompletion. A mix-up on the route that time. What you ask your receivers to do in many, many cases is read whether you've got a zone or a man defense. 
and consequently, you'll break your route off. If it's one thing, you might go deep if it's another. Barsotti obviously thought he was going to go deep. He throws it there, and Pickens breaks it off to the sidelines. And on third down this year, the Bulldogs have been tremendous, almost 50%. 54% of the time, Utah State's opponents do convert on third down. Lots of time again. To the right sidelines, Pickens, and he might have done a little bit of pushing off as he goes out of bounds at the one-yard line. This will be an interesting call for the official. Pickens appeared that he may have pushed off on his way to the reception. But if I'm a Fresno State player, especially Pickens, the receiver, I've got to say I was interfered with because I thought Travis Clark, number 15, threw his hands up in the air in a face-masking type of situation. We'll see what the officials call. It is going to be a, an interference call against Utah State, and it will be declined. Take a look here as Barsetti's going to just lay the ball up. Fresno State has a way of throwing a deep pass where they hang it up in the air and let that receiver come back. Look. Right there was number 25, 22, in fact, Scott Munson, who waved his hands in front of the receiver. That is face masking, and that is a penalty. So a good adjustment by Pickens, who is running backwards as he hauled in the 50-yard pass. Almost got into the end zone. First and goal for the Dogs at the one-yard line. They've had good balance in their offense this year. To the right side, untouched, Kelly Skipper with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year and early just over halfway into the first quarter it's 13 to nothing Fresno State Jim Sweeney told us yesterday that he wants to own the run he wants to especially own the sweep and this is the big play for Fresno State here so far this evening take a look at this the full house straight T backfield I used to run that when I was in grade school not quite as well as Kelly Skipper does however as he takes it in from one yard out Steve Loop trying to make it 14 nothing right through the middle. He's now 25 for 25 on the year. He's on a pace to become the number one Fresno State place kicker slash scorer. He also replaces the all-time conference scoring leader in the PCAA or the Big West, Barry Belly, who is number six in NCAA history as a place kicker, and he also had the punting cure. So Loop doing the job so far. And a big homecoming weekend here in Fresno. In fact, it was so big that the vice president paid a visit a little earlier this evening in his attempt to earn more time in the White House. George Bush appearing at the baseball stadium, Biden Field, right next door. I'm not exactly sure how many uh, conservatives or liberals, but all Bulldog fans. I hereby declare you honorary Bulldog. You recognize the guy standing behind the vice president? Was that Chuck Norris? That was Chuck Norris. I don't know if he was here as a bodyguard or what, but he was here. If I'm campaigning, that's the guy I'd like next you to me. Bet. Here's the kicker, number 39, Scott Musser, a tight end who does the kicking. Brett Payne and Kendall Smith back to get it for Utah State. They squib it in, and Payne has it just outside his own 10 yard line. Decent yardage right up the middle as he gets out over the 25, and Utah State who beat Fresno State in Logan a year ago, will operate there. And that ball was in the air for probably, what, 80 plays last year. Better than that, it was 70 throws by one team. It was an incredible passing performance by both sides last year. But as we said, Fresno State has been running the ball more this year. Coach Sheldon told us yesterday he would like his Utah State team to run the ball more, but he just doesn't have the horses up front to be able to block these guys from Fresno State. their own 27-yard line. Little shift in the backfield. And they swing it out right side. Rather easy pattern there for Tracy Jenkins, a red shirt freshman out of Tulare, California, who's caught now his third pass of the year. Nice safe throw out toward the sidelines underneath that deep coverage. Let those cornerbacks run off on first down. When they come up and jump in a tight man-to-man -man coverage, that's when you'll tell your quarterback, Coach Snyder, to throw that ball deep. You saw Shelton. Jenkins leave. In came Rod Moore, another redshirt freshman who backs up Patrick Newman on the right side. They got a first down out to the 38-yard line. Timo Tagaloa from Auckland, New Zealand. If you could convert spring football into the fall, this guy would be a Heisman candidate. 
He's had a little problem, though, converting his spring successes into top performances in the fall, averaging just over four yards a carry. Let's summarize the Fresno State scoring drive for you. They struck pretty quickly with that 50-yard pass in there. Going just over two minutes. A half dozen plays spanning better than 60 yards. Second and seven. Clock runs with 6-10 left first quarter. Home team in red on top by 14. A little bootleg action as the deep drop is thrown upfield by Snyder. And a nice catch made there. It's out across midfield. Looks like the tight end, Keith Roberson, the 6'2 junior out of L.A. This guy's a pretty good tight end. He'll just drag across the middle here, just try to run away from the man coverage. And he does, in fact. Ball is well thrown against Snyder. Kind of a mobile quarterback, can roll out to his right, throw the ball well, and he throws it where he should, down and away from any defensive back. Yeah, and there was very good coverage by strong safety Tony Harris. Snyder is now four for seven for 68 yards at the 47. And here he comes rolling out left and looking downfield. Completely in the open is Kendall Smith, who turns it, and he is into the end zone. This is what Fresno State was worried sick about. The one-on-one -on -one downfield, what these guys can do, Steve, once they catch the football. Well, they're so talented, and Kendall Smith is so quick. I thought he was going to be tackled on the 25-yard line. Watch Snyder drop back, roll out, and find Kendall Smith now wide open. Now, here is where the fun starts. He's just going to turn and run right away from Fresno State's free safety, Craig Bowens. I mean, Craig just thought he had him dead to rights. No such luck. Right in the middle there, wide open. He turns, finds an alley. Bad angle by Craig Bowens. You just got to tackle this guy because he's too quick. Russ Moody for the extra point. Right through the middle, his 12th PAT of the year. And with 540 left in the first quarter, Fresno State by a touchdown over Utah State. amazing all the things that have happened since I wrote Future Shock. Back in 1970, I said we'd need new tools for coping. With tools like this, the futures come home. Introducing Prodigy. It's a new service for personal computers. I can get consumer reports right here. You can buy gifts without ever leaving your home. I think shopping at home's a winner. With this service, you can send messages to your friends, your coworkers, your family within minutes. I can check 22,000 films in here, and that's even more than I've seen. I can ask Britannica questions. It has incredible implications for education, not to mention fun. And uh, in the future, there'll be many more things you can do right from here. Prodigy, from a partnership of IBM and Sears. Anything you can do, you can do better. The fact that you can do all these things at home, it doesn't shock me. It delights me. Call for information and the location of your nearest Prodigy dealer. With Steve Rabel, Bob Carpenter at Bulldog Stadium, Fresno. Utah State Aggies on the scoreboard. Louis Aguiar to kick it, back to get it. Gerald Robinson and Stephen Shelley. It comes to Robinson, who bats it down inside his own five. Out near the 25-yard line. That's where Fresno State will operate offensively. And here's Tim Brando. Bob, a bit of a preview of a team you'll be seeing next week, the Rainbows of Hawaii, in a game against San Diego, just south of you in Fresno, down at Jack Murphy Stadium. Warren Jones gets in for a touchdown. The game has been dominated by the quarterback. Here's San Diego State's Brad Flat, and he plunges through. They've added a field goal to have the Hawaii Rainbows, and at 4-1, and one, Bob Wagner's team is leading 20-14. to 14. Back to you, Bob. Well, it's nothing unusual for a game in San Diego to be offensive. Certainly not. Nice to see the Aztecs responding with some offense after they were hammered by Wyoming a week ago. First down, it's Barsotti. Left side, split end Dwight Pickens is there. What a great tradition for wide receivers here. Guys like Henry Ellard, Stefan Page. In fact, they're replacing a pretty good one at split end this year. Brock Smith 
who's gone on to the Raiders, is the man Dwight Pickens spells this year as a junior. I think Jim Sweeney has something to say to the official there. Meanwhile, Kendall Smith has just set a Utah State record with his 20th career touchdown catch. This guy is all over the all-time charts. He's up around 2,300 yards in his career now as the number one all-time USU receiver. And here we go long again. Barsomi down deep and the catch inside the 15-yard line. Dwight Pickens. Oh, this is going to be a long night for the Utah State young defensive backfield unless they can try to get a little pressure on Barsotti. Maybe more importantly, just try to run with these guys. But Pickens is so fast. Here again is this bulldog bomb that we talk about. Barsotti will throw the ball up, and I bet if you measure this, it's going to come down in the 43 to 45-yard range. A high arc on the ball gives the receiver a chance to run under it, and a great catch by Dwight Pickens, who comes into the game with 274 yards. And you saw the stat add four catches and 115 more yards already tonight. Almost to the 15-yard line. Barsotti looking right side this time in the flat. He's got his tight end, Craig Jones, inside the five. Jones, 6'4", 235. He's averaging better than 12 yards a catch. All right, let's take a look at the replay as Barsotti takes the snap, the quick drop this time. Not the deep drop, and he finds his tight end out in the flat. Nice little move right there to get by Toby Tyler, the strong safety who was in on the play. First and goal at the four. It's already 14-7, Fresno State. A wishbone look in the backfield. And running it hard toward the right side is Daryl Rosetta, 5'11", senior out of San Diego, who is right behind tailback Kelly Skipper on the depth chart. They brought in three of them that time, and Rosette, pretty impressive stats for a guy who's not a starter. One of the problems that Fresno State had all of last year was that they could move the ball like crazy between the 10-yard lines, but they couldn't put it across the goal line because their running game wasn't strong enough. They've worked on that an awful lot in spring and in fall practice. Gain of two, second and goal. Looks like Mr. Touchdown is Rosette, and he's got his fourth of the year. So a wild one offensively so far here in Fresno. 11 minutes and 15 seconds gone in the game. And in a moment, the Bulldogs will try for the extra point to make it 21-7. You line up everybody you got along the line of scrimmage in three backs, and then you just tell them to dive in there and knock somebody down. You give it to the last guy through, and he dives right through the open area. Now do a little dance for us, too. I'll just high five out of the That'll suffice, I guess. Hug everybody. Got to hug those guys who did all the blocking, don't sure. you? Steve Loop trying to make it three out of three on the night. He's been right down the middle. He's 26 straight on the year. And with 345 remaining in the first quarter of play, the excitement of homecoming weekend. A sellout crowd at the Doghouse, Bulldog Stadium here in Fresno. It's 21-7 for the home team. They've had great tradition here, including a guy named Sweeney at the quarterback position. This was the scene in this stadium two years ago as the Bulldogs took on Utah State. Crowd on its feet, anticipating. There it is! And with that completion to Stephen Baker, the touchdown maker, Kevin Sweeney became the number one all-time passer in NCAA history. He also earned some congratulations from Dad. His father, of course, Jim Sweeney, and Kevin was number one until Todd Santos, the former Aztec of San Diego State, earned that position a year ago. You know, not a conversation comes up here at Fresno State about offense and throwing the football with either the coach or the players, and Kevin Sweeney's name doesn't come up as well. Well, it should. They script the kick toward the left sideline. Brett Payne, number 40, watches it go out of bounds right there. In fact, it's interesting, Steve, because now with a freshman quarterback in Mark Barsotti replacing a senior, Dave Telford, who last year had the fourth best throwing year in Fresno State history. There's been some talk among the fans about some of the struggles that Barsotti had, but they need to remember that Sweeney, as great as he was, had some early struggles back in 83. He threw three interceptions in his first game started, did throw for 329 yards, but they lost the game right in this ballpark to Bowling Green. So the young quarterback 
situation is a learning situation for himself and for the fans. Another short scoring drive. Lots of yards in less than two minutes. It only took five yards, rather five plays. And the bomb figured in once more. Of course, the big play offense by Fresno State. And that the big play, of course, the big play touchdown by Utah State. Both these teams like to score through the air. And it's going to be a track meet. I mean, we we know that now. Brett Payne on your left. Kendall Smith, the man on your right. And the kick will go to senior split end Kendall Smith at his eight-yard line. <laughs> Feeling his way to the other side of the field and going out of bounds right at the 30. The 23-yard return. So Utah State in this offensive show will take over one more time. Utah State led by number 12, their quarterback, Brent Snyder. Some of the most unusual offensive statistics you'll ever see as you look at a football team initially. Coming into the game, they'd rushed for 43 yards a game. 286 through the air. So a team that runs for 43 yards a game is number three in the conference in total offense at almost 330 yards per hour. But it catches up with you after a while. You have to be able to run, if nothing else, to keep the defense on it. Patrick Newman motioning to the near side. That's the way Snyder is looking, and Newman has it one-on-one -on -one out there with Daryl Martin, who bumps him out of bounds. Patrick Newman, a 6'1 junior from San Diego, averaging 14 yards a catch. A 13-yard gain on that one as he matched up against the tall cornerback, Daryl Martin. There you see, we were talking about it a moment ago, just a little over 42 yards on the ground for Utah State. Meantime, the Bulldogs, as we've said, this is wide receiver university here, yet this year they're averaging more on the ground than they are through the air. First down. Ball is between the 43 and the 44. The backs are in the eye. The give is to the fullback. Check at the tailback, Brent Payne. Last year, Brett Payne, as a sophomore, had Utah State's only two rushing touchdowns of the year. Keep your eye on these two guys inside because they're going to be in on a lot of plays tonight. Brian Greer, number 69, and number 54. The rover back is going to make a lot of plays as well. That's Ron Cox. They got just out over the 45. Now the backs are split. Very deep drop, and now the rollout right chasing was Cox up the field and inside the 45-yard line. There's the tailback, Brett Payne. He came in averaging almost eight yards a catch. So they circle the backs out of the backfield using the quarterback role. And this is a terrific pass by Snyder because he is getting chased. Look at this. He's got two guys bearing down on him. That's a great, great throw across his body back to Brett Payne, who came back to the quarterback. A lot of backs there in that sense. At any rate, it's a completion, and that's what's important. That would be frustrating for the secondary to cover people like that, and they still get the completions. He's 7 for 10 for 140 yards, thrown to six different receivers. Tipped. Nice play there by Nick Ruggeroli. The right defensive end who goes 6'2", 240. He's out of Las Vegas. And he got up in the air pretty well that time. Ruggeroli, a name that'll be familiar around this conference for a while. Just a sophomore. Ruggeroli had a career just last week against Cal State Fullerton. Eight tackles and a sack. Also caused a fumble and recovered one. Some impressive defensive numbers coming in. UTEP in the whack. Big over Colorado State. Hawaii at San Diego. You saw highlights earlier. Arizona oh. in the Pac-10 against Washington State. Big nice surprise there. Boy. The Cougars have been playing awfully well. Second down and 10. Back at his own 45. And long down the middle of the field, intended for the tight end Keith Roberson, who would have had to look over his right shoulder to catch that ball. Instead, he had made a cut at the 25-yard line, angling to his left. I think Snyder was kind of motioning, motioning to Roberson to come on back to the huddle so they can talk this one over because Roberson broke to the corner instead of down the middle of the field on that post route where Brent Snyder felt his tight end should have been. And he's a quarterback. He's generally right. Speaking of where his tight end should have been, isn't it interesting to see tight ends 30 and 40 yards down the field as well? In a game like this, this track meet that we have tonight, nothing's in here. 218, first quarter. It's third and 10 at the 43 from the shotgun. Snyder off the hands of Rod Moore. Delivered a little too tall for him. It'll be a kicking situation for the visitors from Logan, Utah. 
and that's unusual for Snyder because and he's upset with himself. He had his man out there wide open, Rod Moore. He doesn't normally overthrow. He makes a lot of good decisions, does Brent Snyder, and he throws the ball well, as we've seen tonight. That one just got away from him. Louis Aguiar at his own 44. Back to receive it as Anthony Williams, a big rush. And the ball is fair caught at the 14. A flag on the play back at the 47-yard line. James Williams was pressuring the kicker and might have made contact. Well, I don't think there's much question. Let's take a look. We'll see the replay on the punt as Aguiar is back there. Only guy with a white shoe on this team. Well, let's see. He was, was almost blocked into the kicker was Brett, Brett Payne. Brett Payne was blocking and flying in was James Williams. Payne said no. Well, the officials are going to think block about him. this. Of course, so, Utah State is hoping it goes in their favor. They'd like to hang on to this football and try to move downfield. I'm sure that's what Coach Sweeney's saying from the far sideline. Hey, we got blocked into that. Watch number 40 blocking on number 31. And now it is going to come back to Fresno State. There you saw him push Williams into the punter. Of course, Williams was kind of airborne at the time anyway. Well, that's a judgment call. That's why the officials make the big bucks. Looks like they made the right one. Ball is back inside the 15 of Fresno State. Chuck Shelton. Yeah, he doesn't think they made the right call, does he? Well, you've got two very animated coaches on the sidelines here tonight. <laughs> Similar styles. Bulldogs will go with the toss. And being bumped out of bounds is Daryl Rosette. Rosette, a versatile performer who spells Kelly Skipper a tailback. Formerly a red shirt at Arizona State. Played three games in 85 and then went to Phoenix Junior College and then ended up here at Fresno State. A club that's got a lot of a junior college flavor to its roster. And they've got a lot of those players redshirted this year. And they'll be helpful to Jim Sweeney and company for a couple of years after this. Good yardage on first down. They'll call it second and one. Draw play. Fullback Myron Jones turns the corner. And he almost gets out to midfield, almost broke it. Bumped out of bounds at the 46-yard line after a 24-yard gain. Travis Clark, the free safety, finally got him. Look out for number 40 because this guy could be a highlight film if he decided he wanted to play every down. You see him, there's no hole inside. He bounces it outside. This guy's a fullback at 190 pounds with 4-3-5 speed. Legitimate, world-class speed, and he's a fullback. Look out for him. Timed at 4-3-3 in the 40 during spring football. First and 10 at the 46. Here's the end around again. Dwight Pickens looks like he wants to throw. Nobody open downfield until now. And in the air is Andre Alexander. He took a big hit from left cornerback Scott Munson. So again, some razzle-dazzle from the home team bringing the split end around from the left side. Now we've just got a flag thrown on the field, but let's take a look at the razzle-dazzle you're talking about, Bob. Here we come, the little flip back to Pickens, who's coming back to the near sideline. He's trying to find his open receiver. Now you gotta come back, that's it. But he throws the ball too far inside. Oh my, took a nasty hit too, didn't he? That'll Alexander. happen to you when the ball's behind you and you're yeah. in the air. They're talking about it with Kevin Bauman of Utah State. An illegal forward pass from beyond the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty. Lost it down. Second down. So that'll make it second and 15. Well, he took a lot of time and so much time, in fact, that he got to the line of scrimmage. It was directly, it was directly in front of us on the sidelines, and all of the players from Utah State had located on the sideline here and the coaches so we couldn't exactly tell if he had come to that line of scrimmage or not but you can bet that all the players and coaches for Utah State let the officials know so the ball is back at the 43 penalties playing a part so far coming in Fresno State have been penalized an average of 79 yards a game Utah State 65 yards per game Time for Barsotti who whips it out left side 
And the ball is intercepted by Scott Munson. The sophomore cornerback who goes 5'10 has his second pass picked off of the year. He picked one off against BYU two weeks ago and turns it around for Utah State here. Now here's a guy that was a running back during spring drills, but he just bides his time in there. Here comes the pass, and he just keeps right on coming. As the receiver slowed down, Anthony Williams slowed to come back. Not Scott Munson. He kept driving back for that football, reached out, and intercepted that pass. So far, Sodi, who has not been intercepted whole too much this year, throws just his second of 1988. Midfield position for the Aggies. It'll play action. Deep drop by Snyder, and see you later. Ron Cox, the 6'2 sophomore rover, number 54, right in on the quarterback. We're talking about a blue chipper when he was coming out of high school. This kid is carved out of stone. I mean, he is tough, he's fast, and he can blitz the quarterback. He'll outrun anybody out there on the field with the exception of a couple of defensive backs. So if you're a lineman, you know you've got your hands full tonight. Washington Union High School here in Fresno, where Cox came out of, and he was one of the most celebrated freshmen in the country a year ago. Now it's second and 19. Utah State trying not to waste this great field position. Good defense there. As the ball was intended straight up the middle. Robert Noble is the linebacker covering that time. Brett Payne, who was circling out of the backfield, it took Payne a little bit too long to get across the middle. Snyder just doesn't have that much time. He's going to get a lot of pressure every play. That's Fresno State's game plan tonight, to try to put Brent Snyder on his back. And I'm telling you, Brent Snyder is one tough quarterback. Last year against Nebraska, he was hit 43 times, didn't miss a play. Yeah, and he only tore knee cartilage in that game, too. Right. Didn't miss a practice, did not miss a game. Here's third and 19, and teeing off is Ron Cox. The blocker held him for a while, but Cox got loose, and it was sack time. He came into the game with seven and a half sacks to lead this club. Well, he's just too quick, as we said before. And if you are forced to throw down after down, there's really nothing that's going to hold him. Play action is not going to work. You've got to try to pick up five or six or seven yards on first down, and that's pretty tough for a team that just doesn't run the ball very well. Louis Aguiar kicking to Anthony Williams. Good spiral down inside the 25. Williams will take the long, deep route. If he doesn't turn the corner, he's in trouble. And we've got flags all over the place. And you have to think, Steve, the way he turned that ball to the other side of the field, we might have had three or four clips on that play. I, I would not doubt it. You set up your return, and you hope that you can get to that wall. But at some point, when you're outside the hash marks, all the way away from that wall return, you've got to say, hey, we'll just call it off, and I'll just take it upfield, try to get what I can. But you're right. We've got big-time clips on Fresno State. Anthony Williams came in averaging four yards a return. He lost four, and they'll lose some more on the penalty that time. Six seconds remaining in the first quarter. First down. It'll be first down way back at the 11 yard line. So we're just about set to switch ends here in what has been a very exciting and offensive first quarter of play. 21 7, Fresno State on top with the football. Sodi gives it to Kelly Skipper. Just a couple of yards as he had to run about 25 yards to get them, and the first quarter comes to a close. After 15 minutes of play at Bulldog Stadium in Fresno, Fresno State leads Utah State by two touchdowns. According to the book, we got three minutes. Tonight, we're going to beat the book. Let's move out. In today's field artillery, the emphasis is on training and motivation because a high-tech system like this Army rocket launcher is only as good as the people who run it. We're here. All that you can be. Arm rockets. Fire. Did we beat the book, Sergeant? We rewrote the book. Get an edge on life in the Army. unexpected problems should arise. Transamerica Property, Casualty, and Life Insurance can be there to protect you. Hey, you big ape! Who's gonna pay for this mess? Transamerica. For insurance.
insurance and financial services, the power of the pyramid is working for you. You are about to witness an incredibly effective fitness machine. Airdyne from Schwinn. The only machine of its kind that lets you exercise your lower body and upper body together for maximum cardiovascular benefits and healthy muscle tone. Use the Airdyne for as little as 20 minutes every other day to help achieve and maintain total fitness. Schwinn Airdyne, the ultimate fitness machine. See your Schwinn dealer or call 1-800-AIRDYNE for a free brochure. And now, on with the opera. From the people who brought you big screen television comes the sound to go with it. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a... Introducing Mitsubishi Home Theater Systems. Now playing at a dealer near you. If you think being out of the house means being out of touch, you don't know Uniden. I've told you before, this is a great cordless phone. Going for a longer ride? Take a Uniden cellular phone, or two-way radio, a CB, a powerful scanner, or get the whole picture with a Uniden satellite TV receiver. Whichever you choose, choose Uniden. Uniden quality goes the distance. The Bulldogs have gone so far. 21 points in the first quarter. They have the football at their 13-yard line on second down and eight. Did the Aggies come across the line? Were they drawn across the line? Dave Ewing, the center, when he sensed that someone from Utah State jumped, he snapped the ball, which is what a good center will do. However, Utah State is saying we were drawn offside. You might have a point. The dead ball. Ball start on the off. So that'll move it back inside the 10 and make it second and 13. You know what's scary as a coach for Utah State? Fresno State, if you're playing field position, Fresno State now has about uh, 93 yards to go for a touchdown. They can get about half of it in one play. That's not too much. <laughs> I mean, in three plays, they can be in for a score. <laughs> Don't think that Chuck Shelton isn't hearing about that right now from his defensive coordinator, Fred Weil. At the goal line, Barsotti over the top of everybody. Dwight Pickens, number two, the intended receiver. Scott Munson, 22, on the coverage. And it'll be third down for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Pickens also had a linebacker between himself and the quarterback, Tom Hansen from Utah State. Got out there deep underneath that sideline route and was that forced the quarterback, or so to put that ball up just a little bit too high. Third and 13 as they huddle it up. three and what we call long yardage tonight and this play won't get off because we have whistles everywhere. Barsotti may have taken a little too much time in getting that play call. Good ball. Delay on the offense. Now, Barsotti doesn't make many mistakes. He's an intelligent young man. A lot of pressure on him as a freshman quarterback. That's one of the things that you practice day in and day out. You got to get that play off within 25 seconds. You know, and you like to see a young man be resilient, Steve. He was yanked in the fourth quarter against Oregon State two weeks ago. An early fumble last week against Cal Fullerton. Then he came back to throw for 202 yards with no interceptions. It's third and 18. There's the bomb, the bulldog bomb to midfield. And it's caught by Andre Alexander. To the 46-yard line of Utah State. The Aggies simply cannot get downfield quickly enough to defend. Well, it's tough to tell whether they're playing a zone or a man defense, but poor Scott Munson is the guy that draws this duty, and he's going as fast as his feet will carry him. But Pickens is just down there three yards ahead of him, and the ball, check that, it's not Pickens. It's Andre Alexander, but the ball is thrown so well, and Barsotti knows it. Now they come back with a draw play. Jones, the fullback. 
down inside the 45 yard line Andre Alexander after that 50 yard catch has to put some of the equipment back in order evidently in hitting the turf he ended up with an ear full of mud and turf I'll tell you what you catch a 50 yard reception you don't care what you got in your helmet after that Utah State has got to get a free safety over to help out on those deep rounds they just got to do it and again remember they're very young in the secondary second and eight Ball is at the 44 of the Aggies. On the ground, they go again. Harold Rosette on the carry. And now for a World Series update. Back to Tim Brando. Bob, uh, that shockwave you got up the coast coming from down south was heard when Kirk Gibson, a pinch hitter in the ninth with two out, takes this one deep to right field against Dennis Eckersley. And with a man aboard, the Dodgers win it. Bad wheel at all. Kirk Gibson gets it done for Tommy Lasorda, and the Dodgers win game one. Eckersley had not given up a home run since August 24th. More on that at halftime. Wow. There is some offense in the state of California tonight. Dwight Pickens catching that pass from Bar Sodi. Hey, if you got a bad wheel, hit the ball out of the ballpark, and you can trot around and touch him off. So the Dodgers with a big lead in that World Series and what an emotional comeback for them after they in almost similar fashion lost the first game of the playoffs right here we've got one minute and 43 seconds elapsed in the second quarter and the stats a big story so far Fresno State all over it offensively and yet Snyder still 137 yards passing he's doing well for Utah State. Darryl Rosette on the carry. Nice play as penetrating from left defensive end, number 93, Todd Thornton, the 6'3 senior from Sandy, Utah. So a typical Utah State story, nothing rushing, a lot passing. Their problem, Utah State's problem, is they have got to find a way to slow down this Fresno State track team that's out here. They've got to get help in the secondary for those young cornerbacks, Lewis Brown, Scott Munson, Dexter Pointer. And those guys are going to be seeing the backs of red shirts all evening long. Ball is at the 30-yard line. Play action and a rollout to the right by Barsotti. He'll keep it himself and get inside the 25-yard line. Finally forced out by free safety Travis Clark at the 22. But there's the extra dimension of Mark Barsotti. He's a better runner than Dave Telford or Eric Bouchelle, their other two quarterbacks, combined with his deep throwing ability and the fact that he's going to be around for four seasons. That's why he's starting right now. You bet. I mean, Dave Telford is a fine quarterback. He completed 40 passes against this Utah State team just a year ago. But Barsotti, as you said, is able to move better. And that's why Coach Sweeney likes this young man in the ball game. He can make things happen, scramble out, much as an Elway or one of those NFL quarterbacks. He got a first down at the 21. So it's first and 10 there. Rosette wrapped up in the backfield, nicely penetrating the outside linebacker, sophomore Tom Hansen. Tom Hansen doesn't get the start this evening because he's been slowed by an ankle injury, but he didn't seem to be too slow that time as Rosette comes to the near side. He tries to make a little move and it doesn't do much. Hansen fights off the block and makes the play in the backfield. It was the tight end, Craig Jones, 87, you saw in the background, down on the turf. Hansen at 6'4", 225, took care of him despite the fact that the tight end is 10 pounds bigger than he is. Time out on the field as the clock is stopped with 11.58 left in the first half. 21-7, Chuck Shelton's Aggies trailing. Mazda's got a brand new vehicle that's as unique and special and friendly as the family dog. It's the all-new Mazda MPV. It carries seven like a wagon, it's versatile like a van, and with its responsive V6, it performs like a Mazda. If Mazda's MPV sounds like something that's never been before, you're right. About the only thing it won't do is get your paper in the morning. The all-new Mazda MPV. Family transportation, the Mazda way. Whether you work up a man-sized thirst or a man-sized thirst, nothing tackles it like Diet Coke. The real cola taste you can drink more of because it's just one gallon. I'll flip you for it. <laughs> oh! Heads again. Just for the taste of it, Diet Coke. This is a peerless do-it-yourself faucet made with solid brass and stainless steel. This is a $7 merchandise certificate. 
When you buy this, you get this free. Choose toward anything in the store. Where you got this? You got that? Peerless Faucet offer ends October 31st. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? Come on, answer. Welcome back to Fresno. Bulldog Stadium, sold out, homecoming weekend, and a field goal attempt coming up for Steve Loop, who is 11 for 18 this year. He'll let it fly for the left hash mark, 40 yards away. He's hit from 51 this year. He's 0 for 2 between 40 and 49 yards. And it was low and to the left. So Loop didn't get much elevation on it, and he pulled it off to the left, and the score will stay 21-7. Fresno State with 11.53 left in the first half. Tonight's college football is being brought to you by Mazda and the exciting new Mazda cars and trucks for 1989. By Diet Coke. Enjoy Diet Coke. You're going to drink it just for the taste of it. And by Peerless Faucet. Peerless installs in no time. Lasts a long time. And if you're just joining us from the World Series excitement, welcome to Fresno with Steve Rabel, the former Seattle Seahawks wide receiver. This is Bob Carpenter. We're in the second quarter of play. 11.45 remaining. And a key play early in this game came from number 31 of Fresno State, a 61-yard touchdown interception return from James Williams. The pass intended for Kendall Smith back inside. And Williams stepping right in front, taking off. 4-3 speed. Nobody's going to catch him. Certainly not the quarterback, Brent Snyder. It's six points for Fresno State. Single back set. Keith Roberson, wing to the right side. Two men out left, and here they come. Good job of picking up the blitz and right over the middle. It was just a little slant by the tight end, Roberson. Greg Bowens, the free safety, in on the play. Utah State getting rid of it a little quicker that time. Well, you have to with the kind of pressure that Brett Snyder has been under this evening. He hits his back foot after three steps and finds Roberson, who's a fine receiver and a darn good blocker for a tight end as well. He makes the catch. Craig Bowens, the free safety, in position to make the play, but not before Utah State gets downfield almost for the first down. We're going to bring the chains out now to see if they got 10 yards. Brent Snyder did a good job of picking up the number of 69. Brian Greer coming right up the middle on the linebacker blitz. They're just a little short. Ball is oh halfway between the 32 and the 33. They've got to get the football right to their own 33-yard line. So they'll be faced with a third and one. And third down has not been real kind to Chuck Shelton's Aggies this year. Around 27%. One of the problems in third down when you throw all the time and you're forced into third at 8, 10, 12 yards, sure, your third down conversion rate is not going to be very good. Against the opponents, Fresno State only giving up first downs on third 23% of the time. Tagaloa and Payne behind the quarterback, Snyder, who does it himself. And it looks like that pile, the entire pile, is out beyond first yard territory. Chuck McCutcheon, the nose guard, tried to stack things up in the middle, but Brent Snyder, who's a strong runner, 6'4", 218. He was number two in the nation of returning total offense players. Last year, number six overall in the U.S. of A. And that's because he can run the football as well as throw it. So it's a first down at the 34. Utah State needs a scoring drive here. They fake the look in. Now they go long down the right side. Racing is Rod Moore. And it's intercepted by Jeff White. Up the middle, he'll go to the 37 or 8 yard line as Jeff White, a junior from Oxnard, California, has his first interception of the year. And the Bulldogs are well into double figures in INTs now. Jeff Moore was a, Jeff White was an honorable mention All-America in junior college. And you're going to see why. Look at him track down this deep pass. The receiver just sort of lost it. And he sort of ran away from it, Rod Moore, but not Jeff White. He reaches high to grab this. Now is when the fun starts. He says, I got a chance to pass some statistics here, maybe even score. I'm going to try to find me some running room. 
So the Bulldogs get it back their own 37. Barsotti will go for the quick strike here. He's looking long for another Bulldog bomb, but nobody will catch up with this one. About four yards short was the intended receiver. Number one was Andre Alexander, and back to the studio to Tim Brando. And out to the Pac-10 in Tucson, where it's not Troy Aikman and Rodney Pete that are the leading passers. No, it's Washington State's Tim Rosenbach. Here he is trailing 23-7, hitting Steve Broussard in the third quarter. That's 78 yards. Washington State has added another touchdown, a 19-yard run by Broussard. They trail the Wildcats by only two in the third, Bob. All right, Tim, and Steve Rabel, you live up in Seattle. What What is it about these guys on the road? Hey, these guys are terrific. They've got a lot of offense. Number one offensive team in the country is Washington State right now. Second and 10. Here's Barsotti keeping out over the 40-yard line. Barsotti running the football 27 times for an impressive, unimpressive 23 yards coming in. But he does have a touchdown rushing and has totaled it as far as 13 yards this year. He's run it tonight two times for 13. You know what's more important than the yardage that Barsotti picks up is the threat of the yardage that Barsotti might pick up and just gives the defense something else they have to think about, something else they have to prepare for as if the wide receivers and running backs for Fresno State aren't enough. Here we come around the end again. Andre Alexander across midfield and down inside the 45-yard line. Toby Tyler, the strong safety, finally rode him down after a 16-yard gain on the play as they brought the end around for the third time tonight. Take a look from the line of scrimmage. You're going to see what the coaches are going to see and the players. Here comes the reverse, Andre Alexander, who has had some fumble problems in the past, but boy, with the speed that he's got, it's tough to get a hand on him to knock that ball loose. He's another burner, just over 4-4 four, four in the 40. Jim Sweeney has some team speed out there. It's first down at the 43. And straight ahead is Kelly Skipper. Big run of the night right up the middle for the man who went 70 yards against Cal State Fullerton in a 23-10 win a week ago. 16 yards on that one. Kelly's averaging five yards a carry, 57 a game. And he's got the big guys up front blocking. The foot speed of these backs is, is something to behold, and they're trying to take advantage of a group that is obviously a lot slower. The Utah State players, not a lot of speed up front. That's why Fresno State running so well. Quick opener up the middle off left tackle they go. Looks like Adrian Cooks 34 who backs up Myron Jones at fullback was the ball carrier. Cooks is a 5'11 junior out of Atascadero California. First time we've seen him tonight. Spelling Myron Jones. Isn't this something though you see little Andre Alexander in your picture there. Number one and you've got number 26 Kelly Skipper. The two most exciting offensive performers on this team go 5'8 and 5'6. They keep saying that football's a big man's game, but I've seen year in and year out little guys come out of college and make it big in the pros. And, of course, our superstars down here at Fresno State and other major colleges all over the country. On second and three, the kind of situation you'd like to be in, Fresno State will use a timeout. Barsotti saw something in the line he didn't like, but leads by 14. You might expect a guy who flies a jet like this to drive a jet like this. The Mazda MX-6 GT. If you also expect it to fly through the wide open spaces, you're right. But you probably don't expect to find all this wide open space inside. I guess that makes it the one sports coupe which flies in the face of convention. The Mazda MX-6 GT. Sports coupe, the Mazda way. Personal fact finding. The governor shot out of here, bound and determined to find out why tourists are spending the summer in a cold and forsaken place like Alaska. Governor, summer in Alaska sure isn't cold or forsaken. Well, let's keep that off the record, Bobby. Are we talking cover up or what? 
more like keeping a lid on it. What do you propose to do about it, sir? Keep our eyes open and stay put. Alaska. It's late and dinner time at Fresno State. Enjoying the night at the ballpark, Bulldog fans. Their team on top, 21-7, second and three at the 21 of Utah State. As freshman quarterback Mark Barsotti has the dogs on the move. Long count. Again, Adrian Cooks bouncing off tacklers down near the 15-yard line. Kevin Bowman, one of the defenders in on the play that time, an inside linebacker. A couple of young inside backers for this Utah State team. Well, they graduated their number one tackler in Donald Miller. And there's some whack action for you. Hawaii still on top at San Diego at halftime, and Long Beach State and Cal Fullerton. The Rebels and the Aggies battling at Vegas. Here's Barsoni improvising inside the 10, angling for the flag, and we may have had a face mask. In on the stop, free safety Travis Clark, as well as Dexter Pointer from cornerback, and one of them may have grabbed the face mask of Mark Barsotti. But what a dimension Barsotti can give you. Again, maybe not necessarily all the positive yardage, but the threat of his being able to run and sneaking out there on that naked boot. Again, Fresno State saying yesterday they want to control the running game. They want to be able to go to either side on the sweep. They want to be able to bootleg. And that's Travis Clark, the free safety. And yeah, he grabbed a hold of a little bit of face mask, I believe. Yes, he did. First and goal at the one for the Bulldogs, who are threatening to go up by three touchdowns. The clock runs by the halfway mark of the second quarter. That touchdown earlier, the first one they've given up at home this year. And into the end zone is Myron Jones. That's his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. The fullback at only 5'10", 190 with that great speed. And when you're only 5'10", 190, Steve, it's a little easier to have your fullback jumping up over the lineman as well. I wouldn't mind having a, line, a, a fullback like that diving over my line of scrimmage. Take a look, though. The big guy's up front. Here's where the credit should go. I mean, yeah, he had to dive, but he had an awful lot of room because look at all those red jerseys lying in the end zone. They pushed their guys back three yards, four yards. Steve Loop on for his fourth extra point of the night. Flags fly as he drills it through. Loop a junior by way of Merced Junior College. Illegal procedure on the offense. Retry. So they'll move it back and make the offense do it again. And you know, Jim Sweeney's standing over there loving what his offense is doing, but and he's happy with the performance tonight, but it's those little things that really irk a coach. You know, you line up for a PAT, point after touchdown, that should be pretty much uh, something that's routine, and yet you have a penalty, it moves everything back. Now it's a 25-yard kick. Yeah, this is no this is no chip shot. High snap. Did he sneak it inside the right upright? Yes, he did. He's four for four on the night, and it's 28-7 Fresno State. 7-17 remains in the first half. My parents are always bugging me to get a job, but I got a better idea. If Proposition 99 passes, I can drive a van like this out of state, load it with cigarettes, and smuggle them back. I can make over 13,000 bucks in a few days' work. Not bad. Is it dangerous? No. They don't got enough cops to check every van. Proposition 99 will create major crime in California. Vote no on Proposition 99. With money like that, I can afford more of these. Attention car buyers, van buyers, truck buyers, listen to this. If you plan on buying a new vehicle, don't wait any longer. Call 800-DEALS-NOW. That's 800-D-E-A-L-S-N-O-W. Become part of the largest consumer buying and dealer selling network ever. No brokers involved, no middlemen. Buy direct and save. Call 800-DEALS-NOW. That's 800-332-5766. All car makes represented. Trades accepted. Call us first or call us last, but just be sure to call us, because if you don't, it may cost you thousands of dollars. Oh. You know, if I've discovered one thing from driving this new Mazda 929, it's this. Not only does it measure up to the great cars of the world with its luxury and quiet, it more
more than measures up when you introduce it to your favorite piece of road. The new Mazda 929, a high-performance luxury sedan, the Mazda way. Scott Musser will kick it off for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Back to get it, Brett Payne and Kendall Smith. It'll come to Smith at his own five. Angling outside. They'll get to the 30 or so before he's run out of bounds by Fresno's David Shelton, number 10. And Syracuse, a big win tonight over Penn State. You saw it earlier on ESPN. Chris Fowler, after the ball game, had a chance to visit with Dick McPherson of the Orangemen. There was Syracuse head coach Dick McPherson. Coach, he said the mission this year proved that last year was no fluke. That's mission right. accomplished. That's right. I think that's exactly what we wanted to do. Make sure they know we're a pretty good football team. Get their respect, and uh, this is a beautiful night for us. Both teams, a lot of mistakes in the first half. You guys cut them down in the second half, showed a lot of poise. Well, I think that, uh, you know, we made a lot of aggressive mistakes, so I was very happy the way we played. We're going to get some more in the end zone, but, uh, you know, this is an awful tough place to play. God, God love Penn State. Congratulations to Coach McPherson and the Orange Men for a big win at State University, Pennsylvania tonight. Kendall Smith on the receiving end of that catch has just tied James Murphy for number one on the all-time receiving list in terms of numbers of catches. Utah State, 133. He might have been a little too honest there, though. He might have been able to run that ball, but he saw it hit the ground as his knee went down just as he caught it, and he just let the official blow it dead. Rifled outside and left intended there for Brett Payne. Snyder missing him. The number one all-time quarterback, Tony Adams, 6,200 yards at Utah State. But if you take, if you take Snyder's single-season performance of a year ago, 2,887 yards as a junior, 280 a game, project that out over four years, he would be the leader. What a season he had a year ago after coming from junior college ball. Third and five at the 36. to the right flat and unable to reach it. Patrick Newman. Tight defense on the play there by 41. Daryl Martin at right corner. Ron Cox is also pressuring. Brent Snyder picks himself up off the ground one more time as Martin jogs back to the Fresno State huddle. Snyder under pressure a lot this evening. I don't think he was able to see that pass where he was going to throw it. He just let it fly. Patrick Newman just couldn't catch up with it. Louis Aguiar to kick it. He'll let it go from about his own 26-yard line. And a tight spiral all the way back to the 13. Anthony Williams for Fresno State goes right over the top of his own man. Looked like number 54, Ron Cox, who'd been blocked down to the field, sent Anthony Williams flying. Well, the most complete NFL programming lineup on TV comes tomorrow. Next Saturday, college game day starts with Tim Brando at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. And that starts a big day as we go Ivy League with Harvard against Princeton at 12.30 Eastern. A little bit later, it's Big 8 action. Ninth-ranked Oklahoma at Colorado, 8 p.m. Eastern. And late night, BYU in Honolulu against the Rainbows at 11.30 Eastern time. First and 10 at the 24. Here's Kelly Skipper up over the 30. for doing a nice job on the draw play that time just waiting back there getting the ball deep with a quickness that a guy like he has he can stand back there deep in the backfield take that hand off and just wait for things to open up draw play is tailor-made for a guy like Kelly Skipper Utah State has the first touchdown in this park by a visiting team this year coming in they shut out New Mexico State and McNeese 90 to nothing getting away from a tackle is Myron Jones across midfield inside the 45 shaken up on the play is the junior fullback but what a great escape that paid off in 20 or so extra yards he got 25 on the play Myron Jones having his shoulder pads adjusted over there I don't think he was injured I think his shoulder pads got hooked up around the buckles of his helmet 
At any rate, he just breaks right away from the tackle of Jeff Hunsanger, breaks it back outside, and now he's going to run over a couple people before he's tackled. This, the fullback with 4-3-3 speed out of the Fresno State backfield. Whoops. Everybody left except the football. It never left the ground. Utah State only came in rushing for 43 yards a game. They've got negative yardage tonight as Fresno State, a team that rushes for 214 yards a game, number one in the Big West, is well on its way to a night much better than that. And forget it, they're behind by 21 now, so you won't see them try to run the ball from this point on. Snyder's going to be throwing every opportunity he gets. Jim Sweeney on the other side, and there's Chuck Shelton. 5-14 left before halftime. It'll be first and 15. Marsotti gives it to Skipper. Look at him protect that football. He gets down inside the 45-yard line. Fresno State knows that about the only thing they could really do wrong at this point of the first half would be to turn the football over at midfield. So Kelly Skipper taking the handoff deep, wrapping both arms around it, and still getting a couple of yards. Take a look now as... Skipper with both arms wrapped around the football. Kind of pushing off just a little bit. You see Del Lyles flying into the picture to make a tackle with freshman linebacker. They split the backs as Barsotti wants to throw. He rolls out left. Rifles it toward the sideline where it's caught by Andre Alexander. Was he out of bounds? I think he was. I think they're going to call him out of bounds. College, of course, you only have to have one foot down, but Alexander didn't have any feet down, at least in bounds. Take a look. Now, this was not, this is not necessarily a rollout. It's a drop back, then pull out of the pocket. And it forces the lineman to come straight upfield before Barsotti then rolls away from them and throws the football. Now you see Alexander could not get a foot down inbounds. One more time. Yeah, he has the ball, but there's his one foot already out of bounds on that right side. And teammate Dwight Pickens was completely out of bounds. Here's Barsotti. Again toward the sidelines, and on third and 12, it'll go incomplete. And for one of the few times tonight, in fact, only the second time, Lance Oberparleiter, the junior, will kick the football. Oberparleiter could not play last week against Cal State Fullerton. Freshman Brad Siegel punted eight times for 40 yards. The man you're looking at was skipping rope in PE class and messed up his ankle and couldn't play last week. Guy plays major college football. He's hit week in and week out. And he sprains his ankle skipping rope in a physical education class. He can't play. Kendall Smith to receive the kick back near his 10. Over par lighter with a wobbly kick that hits at the 15. And he'll get a great roll inside the five. That's where Utah State will take over with 4.17 left before halftime. Trailing by three touchdowns. It's 28-7. The most complete NFL programming lineup on television includes the hour-long preview of each and every game to be played. NFL Game Day, 11.30 a.m., NFL Primetime, 7 p.m., 15 p.m. Tomorrow night, Chris Berman, our opinionated analyst, Pete Axdell, former Broncos All-Pro, Tom Jackson. You get the significance behind the X's and O's in the final countdown to kickoff, and John Sanders helps things along as well. I know I want to get back and listen to what Mr. Axdell has to say. First and 10 at the four, 96 yards away from a score. 417 left before halftime. Snyder out to the right side for number 83, his tight end Ryan Duvet. At the age of 24, a four-year Air Force veteran in West Germany. His head coach, as he played a little football overseas, was the brother of Utah State nose guard Troy Phillips. That's how they found out about each other, and here he is as a 6'8. 24-year-old sophomore. And what a great addition he is to a football team like Utah State, who is in desperate need of some sort of leadership. This guy, a natural leader, coming out of the military and being, as you said, 24 years old. They gain six on the play. It'll be second in a short four. Look out for Mr. Cox. Got away from him. And a nice throw up field to the 24-yard line, but uncatchable for the tight end, Keith Roberson. So Brent Snyder showing his mobility that time as Ron Cox was all over him. And then he had to deal with Nick Ruggiroli, 54 and 77 on the rush. Second time tonight we've seen Snyder slide underneath the tackle. 
And this makes Ron Cox, oh my, now I don't want to be the guy that has to block him next time. We're talking serious mad when he misses a quarterback like that. Third and three. If Fresno State stops them here, the Bulldogs will get good field position with three and a half minutes remaining before halftime. They'll go left side. Easily caught there by Patrick Newman, the junior flanker. So a first down for Utah State. Back to the studio for the guy with the longest work day in America today. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Bob, and back to Cactus Country where Tim Rosenbaum, the nation's leading passer, coming in with a touchdown pass to Rod Olson. And the Cougars have fought from 23 to 7 behind to take a 28-23 lead over the Wildcats. All right, what a game that is. And a first down for Utah State here at the Aggies 20-yard line. Lock stopped with 324 in the first half. Snyder out to the right side. Whoa, what a nifty catch by Kendall Smith. Excellent job just to grab it and hold on out to the 26-yard line. And Kendall Smith at 5'10". You want to see something about concentration on a football? Take a look at Kendall Smith. As he gets up as high as he can, knocks it down to where he can just grab it, hangs onto it as he's smacked, and as he's thrown out of bounds, they also knock his coach down on the sideline. <laughs> and Steve Rabel, what a great record-setting catch that will be to look at on videotape someday when he's a little bit older. Right. Great grab for number 134, number one career at Utah State. Second and four, draw play to the tailback, Brett Payne. Nothing much doing there. Tracy Rogers, the strong side linebacker who many consider to be a Butkus Award candidate, number 45, in on the stop. Good thought trying to get the ball on a draw play because, of course, Fresno State is looking for pass every time. You're hoping that those defensive linemen are going to try to rush right around and allow those big open areas up the middle to hand the ball off. But very, very disciplined up front is Fresno State, and they did not run out of their lanes. Utah State, two out of six on third down. They face third and five at their own 25. Snyder rush gets it away. Intercepted. Daryl Martin. He's the guy with the great reach at 6'3", 200. Ron Cox was pressuring. Martin picked it off his first of the year. Take a look from the end zone and watch Snyder. As he throws it, he's hit. The ball kind of flutters, and Daryl Martin, the big junior, is able to step in front and make the interception. Watch. We talk about how long does the quarterback have to throw the ball. He barely gets set up as he drifts. He throws less than three seconds, and he's hammered by the defense, causes the interception. Two and a half left. Number 40 is Myron Jones, the fullback. So as we said earlier, Fresno State, plenty of time here to stretch that 28-7 lead going into the locker room. By the way, Utah State did win the toss at the beginning of the game, deferred, and will take the football in the second half. But right now, they're concerned with the scoreboard. 28-7 Fresno State as the Bulldogs try to make it 5-2 on the year, 3-0 in conference play. Dwight Pickens. You know, last week we saw a great offensive show by the Cowboys of Wyoming at San Diego State. If I'm not mistaken, Steve, I heard Mark Barsotti holler Wyoming at the line of scrimmage on that audible. That must mean throw it deep like the Cowboys do. Why not? Why not throw it deep when you got a guy like Dwight Pickens out there, has it on the end of his hands, and it slides right through. That would have been a great catch, stretching out to make that reception. Tell you what, this Bulldog bomb, you'd love to see this in a lot of games around the country because it makes the fans, everybody stands up as soon as that ball takes off. I mean, in unison, we have 30,000 people stand up. Well, the only empty seats here are where the band was sitting, and they're getting ready for halftime. There's another reverse. Alexander, now they try to give it back to the quarterback, Barsotti, and a very deep sack there as Tim Rath, a 6'4 sophomore out of Delta, Colorado, number 58. Just stayed with the play, and this is one that will not look good on the film. Sometimes you can get a little bit too fancy. There's one handoff, there's two handoffs, pitch it back. Tim Rath 
not about to be fooled, and he just keeps right on coming and just smacks Barsota. You know, last night during practice, that went for a touchdown with no defenders out there. Amazing how that works, isn't it? When you got nobody in front of you, you generally complete those plays. I think, <laughs> I think that Coach Sweeney will throw that out for the rest of the game. That'd be my guess. Lance Ober Parleiter, the junior punter. Knocked it down inside the five-yard line this last time and flags as the snap got away with exactly a minute left before halftime. May have had a little bit too much time by Fresno State as the 25-second clock wound down. Here's Kendall Smith, the senior split end, who averages 35 yards per return. There's over par lighter. Coming up at halftime, we'll have more from Sports Center. And the big spiraling kick. Fair catch signal at the 11. Smith will take it there. So the Aggies have a long way to go, trailing 28-7. A minute left, first half. A videotape that guarantees original brilliance and sharpness even after 500 plays? This is the tape that does it. B-A-S-F. Because every time you play it, or play it again. Or record over it. Play after play after play, the original brilliance and sharpness always comes through. So if you're looking for the videotape that just keeps coming back for more, ask for BASF. Because even after 500 plays, the original brilliance always comes through. I used to put in five, six hours of TV a day. Now I can't get near it. My parents always have it. You see, Stanley's giving away these home improvement videotapes when you buy a Stanley tool. So now they're doing a few projects in every room in the house. So what am I supposed to do now? You can mow the lawn. Clean your room. Read a book. Get a job. Get a job, yeah. yeah. Get a free home time video. Win a Chevy truck, a $20,000 home improvement, and $1,000 worth of Stanley tools in the Stanley Home Improvement Challenge. In 1.3 billion years, our sun will burn out leaving us in total darkness. We say it's never too early to stock up for the big night. Shouldn't your night belong to Michelob Light? This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? What do we do now? With Steve Rabel, Bob Carpenter, and Fresno. Bulldogs of Fresno State on top by three touchdowns. We'll visit Sports Center to update you for scores and highlights of today's action at halftime. 28 7, the Aggies putting the football on the ground. Timo Tagaloa, the six foot senior fullback. Chuck McCutcheon, the nose guard, met him. Looks like Utah State will play it conservatively here as the clock runs inside 40 seconds. I think. I think Chuck Shelton would just like to take that ball, put it on the ground a couple of times, say, all right, let's go back inside and talk about it just a little bit. Utah State actually doing a pretty fair job in keeping, quite frankly, Fresno State from scoring once again. Back in 1985, Drake in Des Moines in the Missouri Valley downgraded their program to Division III. Chuck Shelton hung in there for the sake of his players and landed on his feet pretty well in Logan, Utah with his fine program of USU in his third year there with a record of 10 and 17. So we've got the first half coming to a close. Coach Shelton to the locker room to redesign this one. His Aggies trail at 28 to 7. Now to the studio and here's Charlie Steiner. But the Dodgers won the West as you know. They won the NLCS and now they have won the first game of the World Series because the guy who could barely walk pinch hit a two out two run home run. Infotainment. In sort of aberrations are us. Today, the topic was hate mongers. And there they were, the white Aryan resistance youth, the American front, and the skinheads of the national resistance. One slur led to another, and pretty soon the shouting escalated to punching and shoving. Sort of a hockey game without skates. Somewhere along the way, Geraldo got slugged in the nose, but even so, he managed to tell the world We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Yeah. 
Eventually, security guards stopped the fighting and escorted the white supremacists from the studio. No one was arrested and no one else was injured. Rivera later described the supremacists as, quote, roaches scurrying in the light of exposure. He said he would broadcast the show later this month. Grizzly strikes out Jeff Hamilton. Dodgers with two out. Kirk Gibson just hoping for an opportunity. With two out, Eckersley is now going to walk Mike Davis, the former A. Tying run on base. Setting up the heroics to Kirk Gibson. Line drive. Deep to right. It is gone a home run. Dodger town goes crazy. Watch Tommy Lasorda. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. And now watch Dennis Eckersley. As you see the Dodgers celebrate. Eckersley who delivered the pitch. It's going. It's going. It's gone. So game one goes to the Dodgers in dramatic fashion. Five to four. Pena wins it. Eckersley loses it. it uh, for Eckersley, it was his first home run allowed since August the 24th only his fifth all-season long. Game two starters, Oral Hershiser and Storm Davis. Suddenly now, Storm Davis in a must-win situation. Hershiser, of course, pitched 24 and two-thirds innings in the National League Championship Series. How much he has left, we'll find out soon enough. We have now about 36 hours to debate who's number one in college football after today's results. We'll try to sort out some of that confusion when we come back. But the party demanded Bud Light. If you want the one light that outshines them all, ask for Bud Light. There is Boris. He is enjoying a cold one. <laughs> Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. This young man is about to repair his own car. As you watch, he's actually fixing one of the biggest problems facing today's engines, clogged fuel injectors. He's fixing it with Mobile Super Unleaded Gasoline. Its advanced detergent formula can unclog fuel injectors and give your car a new injection of power. Drive your engine clean with Mobile Super Unleaded. High octane with a plus. Triple jump checkers is what we're going to play. Stretch. Well, You've got to scratch off the right squares, but anybody can win. And you know what you can win? We can win a Pontiac Grand Prix. Oh, hell yeah. Ooh. That's Motor Trend's car of the year, 1988. The hot car won a Grand Prix. To win a million dollars. Won the Carnival Cruise. Yeah, but, you know, nobody ever wins these. James won a hundred bucks last week. Look, I'll show you you can win, all right? You got it. All right! Play triple jump checkers yeah. and Burger King. First, Gillette made shaving closer. Then, we made it smoother. With Atra Plus, its Luber Smooth Strip glides the razor over your face for Gillette's smoothest shave. The Atra Plus system. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Cornelius Bennett leads one of the NFL's toughest defenses into an important divisional matchup against the New York Jets. Get the inside track this week at 8 Eastern Time on Zenith Monday Night Matchup.
welcome back to the Sports Center. You know, 15 years ago, the UCLA basketball team saw its 88-game winning streak come to an end at Notre Dame. This afternoon at South Bend, the Miami football team suffered the same fate. Their 36-game regular season winning streak, fifth longest in college football history, came to an end in a classic game that wasn't decided until the final minute of play. Let's go to Notre Dame Stadium. This is before the game. Boys will be boys, having to be separated by the state troopers of Indiana. Well, the game finally got underway, and in the second quarter, Notre Dame's up 14-7. Steve Walsh back to pass. He is pressured. The pass is tipped by Frank Stams, intercepted by Pat Terrell, and he is gone. 60 yards. It's 21-7, Notre Dame. But Miami comes right back on fourth and five from the Notre Dame 23. Steve Walsh back to throw. Finds Leonard Conley in the flats. Bolts toward the end zone, and he is in. Touchdown, 21-14. Time running out. First half. Kane still moving. Walsh hitting Cleveland Gary over the middle. Touchdown. It's 21-21 at the half. Second half. Critical play. Miami with a fake punt. Number 99. Matt Britton goes nowhere. Notre Dame with a big play. They take over. Following a big pass from Rice to Waters. Pat Eiler sweeping right. Cuts in. Touchdown. Notre Dame goes up 28-21. Fourth quarter. Irish leading 31-24. Steve Walsh in the pocket. Fires to Cleveland Gary. And now check this out. Does he get into the end zone with possession or not? Is it a touchdown? Is it a fumble? It is ruled a fumble, and Jimmy Johnson is none too pleased. Following a Tony Rice fumble, Miami fourth and seven from the Notre Dame 11. Steve Walsh throwing to Andre Brown's touchdown inside a minute to go. It's a one-point lead for Notre Dame, a two-point conversion try. Walsh back to throw, throwing, and it is tipped away. Pat Terrell with the big play. Lou Holtz after the game. This was a win by the Notre Dame spirit. That's all it was. This was a win by a spirit of a group of guys that just refused to fold and believe. So the Irish take advantage of seven Miami turnovers. Notre Dame now 6-0. Miami 4-1, suffering its first regular season loss in more than three years. We'll take care of the rest of the top 20 when we come back to the Sports Center after this timeout. After Hackett's wheel alignments, all four wheels don't always go in the same direction. But Goodyear certified auto service technicians computer check the alignment of all the wheels, not just the front end. Try Goodyear certified auto service. Now is a good time for you to try Goodyear certified auto service and get a computerized wheel alignment. Hi, I'm Pete Woods. Try certified auto service at Goodyear Auto Service Centers. We'll do the job right with no surprises. At Nearbon, selection and service have always been our priority, so we're pleased to welcome two new members to our family. Presenting Nearbon Porsche and Nearbon Audi, brand new dealerships with a complete selection of exceptional automobiles, like the all-new Audi 8090 and 100-200 series, and hard-to-find Porsches like this 911 Turbo. And with our new Porsche and Audi parts and service facility, you're guaranteed the product support that made our first 20 years so successful. It's a new era at Nearbon Porsche. If you're planning to move, you could unpack some great savings. Because now when you move yourself with Ryder, we'll enroll you in one of the country's biggest discount shopping services, absolutely free. Which means you can buy almost anything for your new home at some of the best prices around. So after you unpack, you can unwind with some great savings. Ryder, we're there at every turn. Guess who has more of the year's top films, Showtime or HBO? Well, Showtime has outrageous fortune. HBO doesn't. Showtime has stakeout. HBO doesn't. Showtime has Beverly Hills Cop 2, Tin Men, Robocop. HBO doesn't. And only Showtime has exclusive rights to four of the year's top five hits. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. Second rank UCLA continues to roll, and Troy Aikman continues to take dead aim at the Heisman Trophy after the Bruins buried the Bears in Berkeley 38-21 on Saturday. Aikman 21-32 on the day, 322 yards and two touchdowns. The Bruins 6-0. They're off to their best start since 1980. They could be number one by Monday. Third rank USC and number 16, Washington in a thriller at the Coliseum. Late in the fourth quarter, Huskies coming back down 28-21. Gary Conklin. Goes long for Brian Slater. He's got it. Touchdown, 36 yards. Now they try for the two-point conversion. 
Conklin rushing his throw, looking for Vince Weatherby, and it is incomplete. USC holds on to win a close one, 28 to 27. Rodney Pete ran for one touchdown pass for another. The Trojans now 6-0, all even with UCLA. The Bruins and Trojans meet one another on November the 19th. Florida State 45-21 over East Carolina. Chris Parker rushed for 158 yards and two TDs. Jeff Ferguson threw for a couple of touchdowns. Seminoles now are 6-1. Nebraska 63-42 over Oklahoma State. 1,117 yards of total offense in the game. 662 yards by Nebraska. Ken Clark rushed for 256 yards and three TDs for the Huskers. Barry Sanders ran for 189. Georgia Tech upset South Carolina 34-0. Yellow Jackets stung the Gamecocks for their first loss of the season. First time South Carolina has been shut out in seven years. Georgia Tech ends a 15-game losing streak. Oklahoma 70 Kansas State uh, 24, Sooner set an NCAA record, rushing for 768 yards. They finished the day with 829 yards of total offense, all that without their injured quarterback, Jamel Holloway. Elsewhere in college football, Clemson over Duke, 49 to 17. Clemson outrushed Duke, 388 to 54. Also in college football this day, Auburn zips Akron, 42 to nothing. Elsewhere, Wyoming, 55-7 over New Mexico. Iowa and Michigan, a 17-17 tie. And Arkansas beats Texas 27-24. Indiana, 33-13 over Minnesota. Anthony Thompson becomes Indiana's all-time leading rusher. LSU beats Kentucky 15-12. Vanderbilt, 24-9 over Florida as the Gators lose their second straight. And, uh, of course, the big story tonight, in case you've been away from the planet the past few hours, in the bottom half of the ninth inning, one on, two out, Dodgers are losing four to three. Kirk Gibson comes up with a pinch hit home run to right field off Dennis Eckersley. For Eckersley, it was only the fifth time all season he had given up a pinch hit home run. So here comes Kirk Gibson out of the dugout with the heroics. What was he thinking at the time we asked him? You know, when I got out there and started warming up and the fans were outstanding and the adrenaline started flowing and um, I just got in there and uh, I hadn't taken a live swing since uh, the third inning of the seventh game. So there was a lot of visualization, a lot of talking to yourself and telling you you love these situations. Refused to think about how I was feeling, even though it was, it was hindering me in my swing somewhat. And after I got two strikes, I just sucked it up and, uh, um, you know, got a good pitch down low. He tried to backdoor me with the slider. I stayed back. When Mike went to second base, it took a little bit of pressure off of me because I was just basically going to try to hit the ball the other way, breaking ball like that. Hopefully I could hit the center of the ball and, and pull it, and that's exactly what happened. Kirk Gibson just moments after one of the most dramatic home runs in World Series history. Back with a wrap of this halftime edition of Sports Center after we catch our breath. Remodeling or renovating? Everyone's doing it. CertainTeed fiberglass insulation can help make your home more comfortable year-round. Whether you're adding it to that new room or re-insulating your attic to help bring down energy bills, hurry to your nearest retailer and get $1 back for every bundle you buy up to $30 with the Buck a Bundle rebate going on all across the country. Certainty at home in America's smartest homes. When you've got a job to do, go with a winner. True Value Hardware Stores where you'll find this 20,000 BTU omnidirectional kerosene heater by Kerosun for warming large rooms. The Crosley three-quarter horsepower waste disposer loves food scraps. It's a 40th anniversary special. And choose a shade of Rust-Oleum wood saver with Teflon that actually repels water on wood surfaces. And make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. For sports news, turn to the experts. Experts who take you wherever sports happen, whatever time of day. ESPN Sports Center, America's Sports Authority. These are not the best of times for the Kentucky basketball program, and the season is only one practice old. The NCAA leveled 17 more charges against the Wildcats this day, including allegations that one recruit was promised a cash allowance of $300 a month, a car, and financial support for his mother. 
In July, an assistant coach at Kentucky was accused of sending $1,000 cash to the father of another recruit. No comment from Kentucky coach Eddie Sutton. Word is the NCAA is not through with its investigation yet. We'll be back with more in just a minute. You know Laval's Pizza. Everybody does. It's a fixture here in Berkeley. Well, to satisfy the demand of our pizza lovers, we had to build a few more. Now there are two in Berkeley, one in Alameda, and another in San Ramon. So Laval's, you know you can get plenty of fresh toppings and delicious cheese all baked to perfection. So why stay home? Well, maybe you're a sofa spud. That's okay. We cater to your kind with fast delivery service and a great pizza every time. Call today, 845-5353. 1989 has arrived at Good Mitsubishi in Alameda. The all-new 1989 Galant, Japan's car of the year, blew all the competition away, starting as low as 10799 If that's not enough, there's the all-new 89 Mirage. More room than Civic, more power than Sentra, and more style than Corolla. And it's now available at Good Mitsubishi. 1989 has arrived at Good Mitsubishi in Alameda, just across the Park Street Bridge. You'll be thankful for ESPN in November. Every week, see the NFL's best in live Sunday night showdown and a Saturday stampede of the nation's finest college teams. College basketball tips off with three preseason tournaments, while championships are at stake in the final auto racing events of the year. Plus, great golf at the Nabisco Championship and Isuzu Papalua International. It's all live in November on ESPN. Well, that's our halftime edition of Sports Center. We'll be back right after the game with a full half hour. I'm Charlie Steiner. Now let's go back to Fresno and Bob Carpenter and Steve Rabel. Gentlemen. All right, Charlie. Thank you very much. It is just about time for the second half of play. Fresno State on top 28-7. They've been outstanding offensively in the first half here tonight. And they are trying to go 3-0 conference on the season and 5-2 and overall. It is a battle of teams tied for first place in the Big West coming into this one tonight. Statistically, I think the numbers, Steve Rabel, will pretty much tell the story of the way this one is going from a running and a passing standpoint. And I got to believe this one's going to be a little bit one-sided. Take a look. Although, at 173 yards passing, Utah State has certainly put it up in the air. But they just can't get anything going consistently. And there you see in the rushing category. And we will not see them attempt to run the ball too much in the second half, I assure you, being 21 points down. Time of possession fairly equal. It's been the big plays, of course, for Fresno State. The big interception return for a touchdown early in this ball game really helped set the tone. You know, Fresno State, everybody talks about it being wide receiver university, but they have very quietly won a lot of football games over the last couple of years playing excellent defense. And I think we're seeing that here again this evening against Utah State. Homecoming weekend. They are 21-1 and 1 here since the start of the 85 season. Nine straight sellout crowds, and they've sold this place out 19 of the last 20 times. And, Steve, they're talking about adding about 20,000 or so more seats here and really expanding this to a 45 or 50,000 seat stadium. And when those 45 or 50,000 folks are in here, they will love to see ESPN come to town because Fresno State <laughs> is 6-1 and one on ESPN telecast. How's that for a statistic? The only loss was last year to San Diego State, but they have been outstanding on the tube, and they will kick it off here as Utah State moving from left to right. We'll have it as the second half gets underway. Kicking the football is Scott Musser, and it goes deep, not too deep, at the eight-yard line where it's picked up by Kendall Smith. Out over the 20-yard line, a 17-yard return, and the Aggies will start there. What have they done? Seven plays, interception stopped them. That was the interception touchdown. Negative yardage their second time as they kicked it away. Then they got the scoring drive that went only four plays in a long distance. Punted, negative yardage in punting, and another interception. Again, a kick, interception, then they lost it on downs, and not a very good offensive first half for Utah State. Quarterback is senior Brent Snyder. Out to the right side, he throws it a little bit behind Patrick Newman. 
A quick drop, and then he whips it out right side. Defending on the play, Daryl Martin, who picked one off earlier this evening. Well, you have to know that's what Utah State is going to come out and try to do. Folks would ask, what did Chuck Shelton talk about in the locker room when you're down 21 against a team that puts it up in the air like Fresno State? Well, Utah State likes to throw as well. They're going to try to get the ball off a little more quickly, try to hit these guys, especially on these quick slant patterns, because they're such good runners after they make the catch, they're liable to break one for a big game. Single back with Timo Tagaloa, the fullback, blocking for Brent Snyder, out throwing again, and out to the right flat beyond the reach of Kendall Smith. Last year, number nine was number seven in the nation as a junior, catching the football 67 times for 1,048 yards, second best season in Utah State history. Brent Snyder throwing wide of the mark that time, and I've got to believe that Brent Snyder is really feeling the heat back there because Fresno State's defense, they pin their ears back, they're going to come play after play after play. There is no run that will slow these guys down up front. They're down in 10 at the 24 and a half yard line. There's two out of seven on third and long yardage tonight. They fake the draw. Cox unloads on the quarterback. And is it caught before it hit the ground? Another one for Darrell Martin. Boy, great pressure that time as the rover Ron Cox was all over Brent Snyder. And I think Snyder throwing that ball as he was hit. He comes off the field, but he really feels that one, although they'll probably not get him out of the ball game. Here are the two wide receivers in the slot formation. Well, I'll tell you what, that's just a great play by Daryl Martin. Breaking on that pass, Patrick Newman kind of slowing up as he's coming out of his break. Now take a look at Snyder and watch the shot he gets from behind just as he throws the football. It's been like that all night for him. Barsotti, little slip as he set up. He goes with the Bulldog bomb, and it's batted away on a good defensive play by the left cornerback, Scott Munson. So we go for another Barsotti bomb here. They normally call it the Bulldog bomb, but tonight it's the Barsotti Bulldog bomb. We've seen three of them 50 yards or more. They just love to do this. They're averaging 27 yards a completion so far in this game is Fresno State. Scott Munson that time doing a nice job locating the football. It's difficult to do when they throw those rainmakers all the time from Fresno State, but Munson doing a nice job looking back into the lights here at Bulldog Stadium, picking up the ball and knocking it down. Fresno State already has 352 yards of total offense in this game. They're slanting off the left side, Kelly Skipper. He came close to breaking it. He just ran out of fair territory down the left side. So the pass sets up the big gain on the run. There's the TD drive the second time that only went six plays, then five plays for a score as well. An interception stopped them, as did a missed field goal. They drove again, eight plays, 60-plus yards for a touchdown. And their only negative yardage of the night came late when they had to kick it away. First and 10 at the 19. Fresno State already leading 28-7. to Kelly Skipper tripped up on the play there. Looked like Todd Thornton, the left defensive end, 93, already down on the ground, reached up to trip him up. It was a fine play by Thornton. He's been in reserve the last couple of seasons, showing some pretty good strength, fighting through the block, sticking that arm out, making the tackle. Well, the coach isn't wearing his Fresno State baseball team cap tonight. Yeah, kind of his lucky uh, cap on the sidelines, not wearing it this evening. Yeah, he got it in Omaha last year when the baseball Bulldogs were part of the College World Series. And into the end! Touchdown, Dwight Pickens right to the flag. Barsotti just popped it up over everyone, and Dwight Pickens nabs it for an 18-yard touchdown catch. Boy, if you're a receiver, you've got to love playing in an offense like this, as is Dwight Pickens as he gets the high fives coming off. Watch Barsotti. Over the top. This is a difficult pass to throw, that little alley-oop pass. First of all, it's not so little. That's a long way to throw the ball, but right on the money, just a perfect spot in the end zone. If Pickens can't get to it, the defensive back can't. Holy mackerel, get up high. No problem on the extra point attempt. It's 35-7. A minute 12 gone in the third quarter of play. The Bulldogs have it their way on homecoming weekend. We're not a company. 
But we'll give you a chance to work where there's always a challenge. We'll give you opportunities to learn, to develop. To perfect skills that you thought were beyond your reach. We'll help you build a career. A career that can reward you for the rest of your life. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Army. The Navy. The Air Force. The Marines. We're the armed forces. It's a great place to start. This sedan offers a refreshing blend of form and function. And if you like its form, wait until you experience its function. Ford Tempo. A more sophisticated way to express your driving ambition. Have you driven a Ford lately? When it comes to making a serious decision, my brother Tom is a lot smarter than he appears to be. Like most thinking Americans, Tom is looking for a contemporary, innovative leader. A leader with quality he can believe in. A leader he can trust. Yeah. Now, he has looked at a lot of television, listened to claims from all sides. Yes. And after careful consideration, Tom has made the smart choice. And that choice is... Magnavox! A sign. A sign. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. Tonight's college football is being brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Magnavox. Smart products for smart people. Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. Fresno State kicking the football away. It squirts down to the six-yard line, and there to take it, Utah State. Kendall Smith. Out over his own 25, Aggies will start there, back to the studio, and back to Tim Brando. Bob, when last we left you, Tim Rosenball had led Washington State back to a 28-23 lead. Enter Ronald Beal, backup quarterback for Dick Tomey's club. That's one touchdown to make it 31-28. And now look at this. The option, Keaton Beal goes in again. He has added a third, and the game is now a final. Washington State loses to Arizona 45-28, Bob. So a little help from down the depth chart tonight for the Cats. Aggies have got to get something going here. It won't happen with the tailback, Demetrius Brown, a 5A junior, who we see for the first time tonight averaging three yards a carry. And it has been, in many respects, a miserable night for the Aggies as we index it. Boy, look at that. They've thrown interceptions, that being the turnovers. They've given up some sacks, and that doesn't count the number of times that Snyder's been able to get the pass off and still taking a shot. There's the quarterback hurries, drop passes, and of course, with no rushing game, you can't keep Fresno State honest. It's a long night for Utah State. Ten times he's been sacked or thrown the football before he wanted to. Second and nine. They're at the 28-yard line. Here come the Bulldogs, giving chase is Nick Ruggeroli. Snyder gets away from him and is met head-on by number 45, the strong side linebacker, Tracy Rogers. Snyder kind of ducks his head and goes back to the huddle, and Tracy Rogers, who comes in with a sack and a half into this ball game, again, one of those speed pass rushers, and he comes from the right side of your screen, and he's just going to put a real shot. Get down on the ground. Brent Snyder, your quarterback, slide down and protect yourself, young man. No gain on the play. There's Tracy out of Taft. Coaches say he's really around 240. Maybe he just looks smaller because he's so fast. Snyder lofts it up, and it's underthrown and unable to reach it. Number three, Patrick Newman. So Snyder again, short on time as well as distance, and the Aggies will have to punt the football with two minutes and 13 seconds gone in the third quarter. And really upsetting for number three, Patrick Newman, the receiver out there, because he, for a change, was wide open, ran a great route on the safety, was breaking toward the sideline, and Snyder just did not have the time to get the ball to him. Louis Aguiar will kick it to Anthony Williams. Looks like good field position for the Dogs. Williams is back at his own 36-yard line. Look out here, and he just got it away. High spiral. Fair catch signal at the 37. Barely getting the kick away was Louis Aguiar. All over him was number eight, Jeff White, the cornerback, seeing action on the special teams. We almost had a block kick on that one. 
35-yard punt. I think Jeff White almost had to go out of his way not to block that. He broke absolutely clean on the kicker. I thought certainly he had himself a block. First down for the Bulldogs. Nose of the football halfway between the 36 and the 37. Off the left side. And good yardage. There's the fullback Myron Jones. He's out of Chatsworth, California. Came in the leading rusher in terms of attempts and yards. 76 carries for 369 yards. They run selectively with the fullback, but effectively. You know, it's not often that you see a fullback, a guy with his kind of speed, that is so difficult to bring down. He just bounces off the tacklers, keeps his balance, and picks up extra yardage. Other West Coast action for you tonight, still in progress. Varsotti will swing it out right side. Trying to squirt away is Kelly Skipper. He got some yardage, but was eventually wrapped up by that talented freshman inside linebacker out of Richmond, California, Del Lyons. Number 49, who goes 6'2", 215. Defensive coordinator Fred Blyle and, of course, head coach Chuck Shelton of Utah State like Del Lyons. They say he's a real difference maker already in his career and he'll be around for a while. Now you can't get done talking about a kid like this who they said is quiet, a hard worker, and fast. I mean, this guy can come and play from sideline to sideline. I got three on the play. Ball is nearly at midfield. The backs are split and receiving the handoff is Myron Jones. Pretty tough defensive play by Kevin Bauman, the inside linebacker. As they move it into Aggie territory as the clock runs, 11:25 remaining in the third quarter. Once again, Del Lyles, take a look, number 49. See how he gets down low, sticks his helmet right in there and makes the play. So you got 48 Bowman, Bowman rather, 49 Lyles. Bowman's only a sophomore. So those two will be playing alongside each other for a while. And Next year, year after, this will be a very improved Aggie defensive team. The secondary has two freshmen, two sophomores starting. Now on third and three. Nobody split out wide, and Barsotti will call a timeout. Toby Tyler did some shifting back at strong safety, and Barsotti figured, I better stop things, even though I have a 35-7 to lead. For years, duffers everywhere have taken comfort in the fact that there's one thing more inevitable than the double bogey. Nightfall. Shouldn't your night belong to Michelob? This long row of junkers is no match for the Ford Bigfoot. But here's a real test. Can a regular Ford 4x4 drive over it carrying a Chevy and towing the 14,000-pound Bigfoot? The Ford starts clawing over the jagged metal with a Chevy on board and towing Bigfoot. Ford is the only pickup with four choices of multi-port fuel-injected engines to give you the power you want when you need it. Yes, the Ford triumphs over the twisted junkers in spite of its tremendous load. Ford, the best-built American trucks, eight years running, built Ford Tough. This is not the time to learn that all antifreezes aren't the same. What's in your radiator? Come on, answer. Gillette has changed the face of shaving. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. After a plus, its Lubra Smooth Strip actually releases lubricants to glide the razor more smoothly. Incredible smoothness from the first stroke to the last. The Atra Plus system. First, we made it closer. Then, we made it smoother. Fresno State 35, Utah State 7. Less than five minutes in to the third corner. It's third and three for the Bulldogs. Near side, Alexander in motion and a big hit put on Kelly Skipper right in the middle. Number 99 is Brian Hunsaker, the older of the two Hunsaker brothers. Brian's a senior, Jeff his brother a junior. They both go 6'5", Brian goes 265, out of Logan. And yeah, they've got great football tradition in their family as well. The brothers Hunsaker, their granddad, Elmer Bear Ward, back in the 30s was the first ever Utah State All-American. Taking the football away here is Lance over Parlider. Utah State hoping it goes into the end zone and does it. 
Inside the one, they've downed it. The last man to knock it down was James Williams, a cornerback on the special teams. Utah State in big trouble, and back to the studio we go. You know, Bob, lost somewhere in that Notre Dame victory over Miami. Well, let's look at Barry Sanders, the Oklahoma State star, who had 189 yards rushing today in a loss. Now, as we continue with the Heisman update, Steve Walsh, 31 out of 50 for 424 yards, the three interceptions in the loss, though, may hurt him terribly. But here is Sweet Pete, 16 out of 22, 186 yards. Not a bad day for Troy Aikman either. 21 out of 32 for 322 yards, Bob. Huh? All right, Tim. Very deep, Utah State. They'll throw for running room. Up the middle, nice catch. Little slant in pattern as Snyder, that time, got plenty of time to throw and will look again at the punt. Now look at that two Fresno State players in the end zone keeping that ball out of the end zone so again I guess the player can break that plane into the end zone but as long as the ball doesn't they can down that ball right there 44 linebacker Blair Holloway was the man who made that initial soft little touch to lay the football down first down for the Aggies they got about 12 on that play and a draw Timo Tagaloa Straight ahead, and he gets out past the 20 yard line. Tagaloa, a six foot senior from Auckland, New Zealand. He was a very good rugby player. In fact, he represented his country internationally two years in a row on the rugby national team. And we haven't seen much of this tonight a successful rushing attempt. And most of this was by Timo himself. Look at him just bounce off of people. He may go for more if somebody doesn't trip him up right there at the, at the very last. Timo, five rushes for 10 yards. It's second and two as he got eight of them there. There's a quick out. Left side, Rod Moore, the freshman flanker out of El Cerrito. And so the Aggies starting to mix things up a little bit. Little running, a little quick release here. We'll see how quick. That's right. He's got to get rid of this football. We saw a few moments ago he had almost no time. There, he gets rid of it in 1.2 seconds. So he drops back about a step and a half and finds that quick hook outside. Again, had the defensive back decided to come up and play tight, he'd have taken a couple extra steps and probably thrown it deep. First down at the 30. Five-man front by the Bulldogs. Backers are coming. They swing it out left side, and it's Kendall Smith. Actually came back and lost a couple of yards trying to break it down the sideline. Pretty good coverage by the Bulldogs there. So the clock is stopped with 8.46 remaining in the third quarter of play. 35-7, Fresno State. And a safe pass that time. Again, the quick hook outside, finding the sure-handed Kendall Smith, and perhaps he breaks free and picks up a few yards. And Steve, if they are to get maybe the quick strike they're looking for somewhere down the road, they may have to set it up with plays like this. Sure, you've got to loosen that defense up somewhere. They got three on that play. Axer in the eye. Play action. Now he steps up into the pocket and launches one long. Double teamed is Patrick Newman, and it's knocked down. 41 is Daryl Martin right there, as well as his teammate Craig Bowens, the free safety number seven. So double team. No way for Bowen, or rather Newman, to catch that. And you know what Snyder did that time, Bob? That he hadn't done much in the first half. He stepped forward to release that ball. How many times in the first half did we see him falling backwards on his back foot trying to release that football? That time, a good, strong throw, stepping up into the pocket. So he got some pretty good protection, but he also didn't scare himself out of the pocket. Two for nine on third and long, three for ten overall. Third down and seven at the 33. Good protection this time, and a wobbly pass up the middle. Kendall Smith unable to hold on. We have a flag on the play, and some Bulldog defenders went rifling into each other. J.D. Williams is one man down. Ron Cox may have been the one he ran into. Williams is obviously hurting, and Cox is not moving at all. Kendall Smith was the intended receiver, and I thought surely he's the one that took the worst part of that shot, but he popped up and has gone back to the Utah State huddle, and as you said, Cox has not moved since he was down on the ground. Oh, these are two players that Fresno State cannot afford to be without down the line in this conference schedule. 
I think Kendall Smith knew something was coming. Oh, boy. I think Cox took a knee right to the forehead as he dives down. Kendall Smith probably does the smartest thing, and that's get out of the way. He had the ball in his hand, but he saw everybody coming. You bet. Cox took a, a knee right to the forehead, the knee of James Williams. That's why he limps off, and Cox is uh, a little bit woozy. Not a little bit. He's a lot woozy. Cox has five quarterback hurries tonight. James Williams has an interception for a touchdown tonight. J.D. has two this season. But unlike Utah State, that is so young in that secondary and even younger in the backup players, Jeff White, number eight, can step in on defense in that secondary spot for Fresno State. And he, too, a junior and experienced football player. Well, he was a starter recently. And Cal State Fullerton really got some yardage on White last week, and Williams came in to shut them down. Kick is back at the 22-yard line. Circling for room, Anthony Williams to the near side. Running out of turf to work with. And so at around the 26-yard line or so, that's where Fresno State will start operating this time. The Big West used to be called the PCAA. Here's the standings. Fresno and Utah in action here tonight. San Jose State winning today over Pacific 2-0. Cal State Fullerton losing tonight to Long Beach State. UNLV is also in the hunt. And, of course, the winner of this league meets the winner of the MAC, the Mid-American Conference, in the California Bowl right here. The Chippewas of Central Michigan moving into first place today as both Ball State and Western Michigan lose. December 10th is the date on ESPN as the MAC champ takes on the Big West in the California Bowl. At Bulldog Stadium, 8-19, third quarter. Bob Carpenter, Steve Rabel, it's 35-7, Fresno State. Holding on the punt return, so the dogs are way back. Inside their own 20, they'll start from their 17-yard line. And as well as Fresno State has played tonight, they've backed themselves up on special teams a number of times with big penalties, so I'm sure Coach Sweeney will have something to say about that. Oh. Well, nowhere to go for the fullback Myron Jones. Well, there was a little someplace to go. Unfortunately, it was all into Chris Stetz, yeah. number 97, the big freshman who got the start tonight at the nose tackle spot out of Santa Monica. Another kid who is really active. He'll play sideline to sideline as a nose tackle. Makes a lot more plays, his coaches were telling me, than most nose tackles because he's got a, a great deal of speed. Not all that big. It's 6'3", 245, but he's a tough one. And their other nose guard is just a sophomore in Drew McCallis. Second and 10. Barsotti dropping back inside his 10. Here comes another bulldog bomb. This one is wobbling. Munson had a touch. So did the intended receiver, Andre Alexander. Munson going for the interception. Got the first touch. And Alexander almost got it after the tip. Take a look at number 22, Scott Munson. We'll see him. We'll pick him up in just a moment as Barsotti. Again, lots of time to throw. Here goes the Bulldog bomb. I mean, he's throwing high, long rainmakers. But look, this time we got Munson in on the play. Very nearly lets that ball get caught by the receiver. But he gets up there, makes the play, knocks it down. Well, Scott thought he had it. Third and ten. Marsotti a little shorter this time and out toward the left flat. Out in that area was Dwight Pickens with the ball sailed a good five yards or more beyond him. So it'll be Fresno State kicking the football as Chuck Shelton tries to get something going along the near sideline. His Aggies have not put much together offensively tonight, trailing by 28 halfway through the third quarter of play. He's got to be happy what he's seen, though, here. This uh, series on defense, stopping Fresno State here. I'm sure they had a long talk at halftime. He just said, guys, come out and play your best. That's all I can ask. Lance over Parlider, back to Kendall Smith, who won't be able to field it. Takes a bad bounce for Fresno. And the Bulldogs will actually have to down the ball at their own 28-yard line after only, excuse me, a 45-yard line after a 28-yard kick. The points leader Danny Sullivan aims to retain his lead in the pivotal race near the close of the cart season. Bobby Rahal has other ideas. ESPN brings you the cart champion spark plug 300 kilometer from Monterey. That's at 430 Eastern on Sunday. 
Good field position here for Utah State. Well, one of the first times tonight that I can remember that Utah State has started to drive inside the Fresno State territory, inside the 50 yard line. Now they've got to get something going here if they are to have any chance at all to get back in this football game. Looking left, a little slant in pattern, a one-handed catch by Kendall Smith, who gets almost to the 35 near first down yardage, and back to Tim Brando. Bob, a lot of folks on the West Coast are hoping that USC would someday play Notre Dame and both teams unbeaten, but it very nearly didn't happen today. Kerry Conklin to Brian Slater with a minute 39 to play. Washington now with a chance to go for two and the victory. The upset win. Conklin's pass to Vince Weathersby, perhaps launched a bit too soon. USC hangs on. Who's number one, UCLA, SC, or Notre Dame? I say Notre Dame. Bob, back to you. They whipped the top dog today, although they had a nervous moment at the end. So a couple of pivotal national games today, Steve, falling just an extra point attempt short. Well, I know there are a lot of folks out on the West Coast where I live that would say UCLA, the number two team in the nation coming into this weekend's play, is the team that should be listed atop the top 20. However, I almost think you have to go also with Notre Dame. The kind of game they played this afternoon against Miami, the big play Miami football team, that was just a great win. And, of course, the Irish meet the Trojans later. The Bruins and Trojans meet. There could be a lot of changes before this thing's over. First and 10 at the 31. And Snyder airs it out right side in a diving defensive play. And again, the reach of 6'3", 200 junior Daryl Martin, the largest secondary man at Fresno State since Anthony Washington. In fact, last week, Cal State Fullerton head coach Gene Murphy called this guy the biggest cornerback in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and he is able to reach in and knock that ball down. Kendall Smith, I think Kendall maybe was getting a little tired on that play because he sort of fell away from that football as Daryl Martin was the one who made the big break on it. Second and 10, ball at the 31, Utah State. Down by four touchdowns with 6-14 left, third quarter. Well, Kendall Smith just got one that was a little too impossible for even him to handle. The Battle Las Vegas in the thick of the Big West race handling New Mexico State's Aggies tonight at the Silver Bowl in Vegas. We saw Kendall Smith just a moment ago reach up and very nearly come down with another reception. It's a tough pass to catch here as a receiver going back to the huddle saying, hey, quarterback, you just put my ribs out the pasture. No, thank you. That ball is drilled. Third and ten. There it is inside the 15. And again, Kendall Smith drawing double coverage, getting open and bringing the football down. Keep in mind, he's a senior who stands only 5'10", but pretty good leaping and reaching ability. Look at the uh, twin set out here. The one defensive back kind of rubbed off. You almost call that a pick, but it wasn't a pick because the two defensive backs just ran into each other. You've got to have some communication back there in the secondary. It allowed Kendall Smith to just slide outside and make a big reception. Oh, that was great timing. You saw the checkoff made by the defense, and before they could recover, the ball was in the air. First and 10 at the 13. Straight ahead, now to the right side, and forget it, Demetrius Brown. Net head on there by number 94. Fresno State in on the play there. Garnett Fountain seeing action at that weak side linebacker position. He and Robert Noble share some of the duties over there. Garnett, a six foot senior out of Modesto. Garnett comes in tonight, starting this football game. Listed as the starter earlier in the season. Then he lost out to Nobles. Then he comes back in and starts again. Second and 12 at the 15. Heavy pressure down the middle and nearly intercepted. Jeff White had a couple of touches on it. And uh, you see number nine right with him, Kendall Smith, who evidently did a pretty good job of snuffing out a possible interception. And then he turned into pass defender. And you have to. As a good receiver, you have to be prepared because that ball is not always going to be right where you want it. And you have to do an awful lot to keep it from being intercepted. Take a look as the defensive player steps in there, tries to make the interception. Kendall Smith bats it away from him. And once again, if you saw Snyder throwing off his back foot, throwing, falling away, you got no control that. Ruger Riley got there first. 
and the sack is finished off. 93 is Willie Howard. 44 is Blair Holloway, but credit 77, Nick Ruggeroli as the man who destroyed the play. And Bob, credit the secondary of Fresno State because they just did not give Brent Snyder anybody to throw the football to. He's looking, he's looking, he looks three different ways. He probably checked off to four receivers because he's that good a quarterback. Still nobody open. Russ Moody will try a 40-yarder here. The holder is Russ Witterberg, a reserve quarterback. Good snap by Jerry Brown, and it is right through from 40 yards away. So the Aggies have their first points in a while. A 40-yard field goal is 35-10 in the third quarter. Come and enjoy our equipment and see what a difference it can make to your health and fitness. Visit Gold's Gym at Albany Hill or the newly opened downtown Berkeley location. Come in during October and sign up for Miami Vice's Slice of Vice contest. It's a drawing for a Ferrari Testarossa or it's a $150,000 cash equivalent. Come in now to register and see all that Gold's has to offer. Daily aerobics, the exclusive sport telesis program, and personal training on our complete equipment line. So play Slice of Vice by stopping in Albany Hill or downtown Berkeley today. This beautiful fur is soft, warm, and elegant and can be yours. It's one item in thousands of dollars of available merchandise up for auction when the Boys Club hosts its annual dinner and auction October 22nd at the Mira Vista Country Club in El Cerrito. A complete sit-down dinner will be followed by a silent and live auction. It's an evening of fun and the black tie is optional. Bring your party clothes, your wallet, and your good spirits to the Mira Vista Country Club in El Cerrito October 22nd. For more information and information, call Carolyn Pogue, 620-1320. A performance you won't forget. The new Ford Probe GT. Have you driven a Ford lately? Yes, for you folks watching in or around Logan, some of your faithful are down here. The Aggie fans making some noise after that 40-yard field goal by Russ Moody. On the return now, it's Fresno State and getting outside Stephen Shelley, a junior flanker on the special teams. Pretty good yardage there. A flag flies very late, and we may have had a late hit on the sideline. And for you Aggie fans that are watching back in the Logan area and the ones that are here, of course, in the, in the stadium, we talked to Chuck Shelton, the coach, yesterday. He says, guys, this team, I know, we're outmanned a little bit, but he said, you just wait. We have got some great athletes coming along. He's got them red-shirted. They're youngsters. And he says they are going to be some players. Looks like a bit of a forearm being thrown there by number 46, trying to knock, uh, knock the play down. Dexter Pointer, one of the defensive backs for Utah State. And, Chuck Shelton just calmly questions the official and takes his place back on the side. Well, what's interesting about Coach Shelton and his program right now, he says it's right on schedule as far as developing young players. This is still, until this result is a final, if it stays this way, one of the hottest teams in the conference having won five out of their last six last year and their first two this season. Far Sodi. It's very near the line of scrimmage. Inside the five-yard line is Dwight Pickens, but flags are flying, and I believe he was beyond the line of scrimmage. I think that's exactly what the call is going to be, but far so he just rifled that ball between the defenders. Rolling on, I can't get over the ability of Barsotti. Line of scrimmage was the 43-yard line. Take a look. He fakes the handoff, comes back the other way. Now he's running forward, and he... He finishes, as you can see, he's he's across line. Did you see him kind of run back across the line? <laughs> he looked at the official and says, I wasn't across the line, honestly. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was at about the 44-yard line when he actually let it go by the time his momentum carried him. He was about four yards beyond the marker. Oh, and I loved it. Gets the offense, pass it down. Second. He noticed where he was, and he jumped back across the line and just kind of tried to hide behind one of his line. Yeah. Jim Sweeney is 11th year here, a three-time PCAA Coach of the Year. He's won three titles. He's won two California Bulls. 
and maybe headed to another. You know, his team really has things in its favor if they win this one tonight. Because next week, Utah State goes to San Jose State. And then two weeks from now, that's where Fresno State goes after an off week on the 22nd. They bring the end around near side, Anthony Williams. And not much happening on that play as Tom Hansen, the outside linebacker. So what a great opportunity for Fresno State if it wins here tonight to scout the ball game next week have a little bit of a breather and then play San Jose State two weeks from now. And you were talking about their schedule. There it is right there on the 29th at San Jose State. Then Pacific, who lost today. UNLV, who won. And then Long Beach State. And they'll get ready, they hope, they hope, for the California Bowl right here on their home field. So when Utah State goes down to San Jose a week from now, they can scout the heck out of that one and rest up. Third and 13 at the 40. Lock runs with 350 and 335 left in the third quarter, and it's another Bulldog bomb running underneath it, and it's intercepted. 46 is Dexter Porter with an outstanding grab to take it away from Anthony Williams. That was a great effort by number 46. That young man right there from Davis, California, Dexter Pointer, just a freshman. He was moved over to the cornerback spot from wide receiver Barsotti. Throws this one about 318 miles up in the air. It comes down, bounces around, and Dexter Pointer grabs it. You know what, though, Steve? What? Third and 13. This is just as good as a 55-yard punt. You're absolutely right. In this situation, Jim Sweeney doesn't mind the interception at all. Doesn't make Barsotti's stats look too good after the game, but that's okay. They're going to win by a long shot, probably. First and 10 at the 5. So the Aggies with a long way to go. They got three their last time down the field. And this could be safety time. Yes, it is for two points. Looks like Tracy Rogers, 45, the strong side linebacker, blindsided Brent Snyder, who had little time and no room. Tracy Rogers is a real blitzer. I mean, that's what this linebacker loves, loves to do. And Brent Snyder with his back turned to him, there's no way he can possibly see this guy coming. There must have been a miscue up on the offensive front. Nobody even touched Tracy Rogers. So it's 37-10. With 3.24 left third corner, the defense scores big. Casey Rogers had his best game of the year against the Big 8's Buffaloes of Colorado with 20 tackles, but he got a blindside shot for two points right there. And his team will receive the football. And again, as we talked about, Fresno State's been winning football games the last couple of years. Yeah, they've been throwing the ball, but they have done it on defense as well. Last year, they led the conference in pass defense, and Tracy Rogers was a big part of that by getting in there on the blitzes. Next Saturday will be another big one for college football on ESPN. It starts Tim Brando and company with College Game Day at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Then we go to the Ivy League for Harvard and Princeton at 12.30 Eastern. A visit to the Big Eight as we go to the Rocky Mountains later, 8 p.m. Eastern Sooners and Buffaloes as Oklahoma visits Colorado and way out west. The Cougars of BYU at Hawaii against the Rainbows at 11.30 p.m. Eastern Time. They will punt the football away. It's grabbed at the 28-yard line. Number three is Anthony Williams. Up over the 39, a flag flies late. Looks like some extracurricular discussion between John Lowe of Utah State and Robert Nobles of Fresno State. Personal foul will go against the Aggies. And it's tough to keep your cool out there. Coach Sheldon is talking to his players. But, uh, you know, it really is tough. As you can see, he's, he's having a, a, a little conversation with his, uh, his player on the sideline. You just can't do that, he's saying. You've you got to keep yourself in the ball game. We can't afford penalties like that. John Lowe, a freshman inside linebacker who backs up freshman Del Lyles, has been ejected. Oh, has been ejected now. Three minutes and 19 seconds remaining. Personal foul on the defense. Ejected player. First down. Great field position here for Fresno State. Boy, not even a hearing on that. Just see you later, Tom. Hey, the guys in the stripes are the judge and the jury. You bet. You bet. 
Tonight, they've seven ten. Fresno State on top of the Aggies. Tonight, they've also been officials at a track meet. These guys have run as much as the players have up and down the field. Put you right in the line of scrimmage with those guys working in the trenches. Almost moved just over the 45-yard line. Looks like they'll unpile on Myron Jones, the fullback. And while Fresno has been able to move the ball on the ground this evening, we haven't really given much credit to that offensive front of Jim Sweeney's team. Radman and Skidmore and Truchel and Vial and Luf Lufon. Arsoni with a little option to the left side. Timed his pitch to Kelly Skipper. The Aggies did a pretty good job defensively of stringing that play out along the line of scrimmage. Kelly Skipper has 11 runs for 60 yards tonight. He, just over his average, he came in averaging 57 yards a game. He's never had a bad game, says Jim Sweeney. You know, in the old days, Kevin Sweeney would occasionally get injured, and Kelly Skipper would be the guy they would call on to run the ball, sometimes nine or ten straight times. And the coach says people forget that about this guy, but he's been a consistent and a very heady player for Fresno State for several years. They tried to swing it out that time to the fullback Myron Jones. It'll be fourth down and a kicking situation, but Fresno State again will get to keep the field position because a good kick pins the Aggies back deep, and that's what the job is for Lance Oberpar Leiter, the junior kicker. And while a long field certainly doesn't seem to bother Fresno State, and Utah State has the weapons in guys like Kendall Smith and Patrick Newman, they just have not been able to click on that offense. Kendall Smith back to receive the end over end kick. They'll take it after the fair catch signal at the 13 yard line, so that's where the ball will change over with 2.03 remaining in the third quarter. been very impressed with what we've seen of the support for the Bulldog football program here in Fresno State. Obviously when you rush and pass like that it's a lot of fun to support a football team as they go to defense now leading by 27. You know this is one of the great basketball drawing schools in the nation. Fresno State. Of course at ESPN we're so into college basketball as well. Timo Tagaloa carrying the football there on first down. Right now, Fresno State is the number one drawing college basketball team in the state of California, which may surprise some people, but UCLA's attendance has been down a little bit. And they have plans now to build a 15,000-seat on-campus basketball arena. Right now, they're playing downtown and selling out a 10,000-seat building on a regular basis. You put that together with this stadium expansion they're talking about, and you've got a rising athletic program out here. You have a program that perhaps someday may look to uh, spread itself, expand beyond the Big West Conference. Who knows? Second and ten at the 14, out to the right side. What a catch as it's put down on two touches by Rod Moore. That redshirt freshman we talked about earlier. He's averaging 13 yards a catch, and this was pretty good concentration here. I don't know that I've seen as many receivers do such a good job in tipping that ball, giving themselves an opportunity to catch it, and then coming down with it. Once again, Snyder throwing with a big hand in his face. But take a look. There is Rod Moore tipping the ball up and then coming down with it. That's an excellent play now. There you go. It just didn't look like number older, number 83 with the Seahawks a few years ago. Yeah, didn't guy yeah. named Rabel. No, I don't think pretty so. Pretty acrobatic, wasn't he? No, hardly. First and ten, yeah, but nobody knows about you because of Largent. That's <laughs> yeah, including the quarterbacks that I played with. They didn't know about me either. I believe Brent Snyder may have taken a little finger in the eye a moment ago when he got smacked in the face as he was trying to release the ball. But as we said, this kid is so tough. Well, let's repeat what you talked about earlier tonight for folks who weren't with us. When they opened the season last year against Nebraska, he took 43 hits in that game. Cartilage removed from his knee during the ensuing time. Never missed a snap in practice or in the game. Toughness. Some would question the smarts on that, but oh, he's a very intelligent young man. First and ten at the 38. Deep drop. Nothing open downfield. And getting to him was Blair Holloway. The backup rover who spells Ron Cox. Holloway, a 6'2 senior from San Diego. 
And now and he's Cox. shaken up on the play. Yeah, Holloway stays down. Cox is out of the game. He was injured, of course. We saw that a few moments ago. Well, it could be a tough night for the rover position for Fresno State. You know, you always, as a coach, you want to win football games, certainly. But the thing you fear most are the injuries. I mean, you see Jim Sweeney standing over there with his arms crossed. He's thinking, you know, how deep do we have to go into this football team before we start getting into some of the real youngsters? And again, with the meat of the schedule coming up, they've got to try to keep these guys healthy. And you immediately think to what we talked about earlier with that week off coming up next week. That's a good thing the way Cox and now Holloway those rover backs have been racked up here tonight. It looks like he might have been injured by Matt Cato and others tumbling up over the top of him. Yeah, he had the quarterback lying on his leg and then his own players came and fell into the pile and rolled him back over once again. Hey, that's that's pursuit for you. Yep. Boy, Snyder, has he had a tough time tonight? He has been hurried nine times, been knocked on his back six times. And I'll tell you something, the sign of a great quarterback is the ability to get rid of the ball when you're under pressure. He's thrown the ball tonight 39 times. He's been hurried, sacked, or intercepted 19 of those times. This one is to the sideline, out of bounds. And he's trying to grab it, Kendall Smith. So almost half the time tonight, Steve, Brent Snyder has been pressured into some kind of problem by the Fresno State defense. You know, Brent Snyder makes so many big plays for this Utah State ball club that I think he feels that it's on his shoulders to continue making plays time in and time out. And that's part of the problem. He refuses to get rid of the ball when he should in hopes that he can make something happen. That's why he has six sacks already, and we're still in the third quarter. 18 seconds remain before we go to the final quarter of play. It'll be third and long, third and 20 at the 28-yard line of Utah State in the shotgun. Right side, man open, but the ball is too far for Patrick Newman. So fairly deep in their own territory against an explosive offensive team. Utah State will opt to kick it away. Louis Aguirre is back on the field. Number 14 in the nation as a junior last year, 43 yards a kick is averaged down a bit, right around the 40 mark all year. He's already punted it a half dozen times tonight. Anthony Williams is back at his own 35. It'll sail him back to the 29. Nothing left, nothing right. Now he's running out of room and escapes up the sideline. Flags fly, and you have to think, again, with the punt returner changing fields like that, somebody threw a clip. Well, again, Fresno State likes to set that wall up. And you saw Anthony Williams. He kind of stuttered, kind of delayed for just a moment. So the third quarter comes to a close on that play. One more time, we're going to see. You see all the red jerseys there lined up? They're trying to set that wall up. Well, look at the clips. You see number 53 get hit right in the back. That was a clip, and there's another one downfield. Oh, what dangerous out there. We'll clip our way into the fourth quarter here. 37-10, Fresno State. A newly imported car has arrived. It comes from a company with a reputation for quality and design. And the automotive press here has already begun to praise it for its performance, styling, and value. The interesting thing is that here is Japan. And the car they're importing is the Ford Taurus. The new Remington Electroblade vibrating blade system has been an amazing success for those who prefer shaving with a blade. Electroblade's high-speed motor and vibrating twin blades glide so easily, you'll get the closest, smoothest, most comfortable blade shave you've ever imagined. If you don't, I'll give you your money back. Safe, immersible, and cordless. The new Remington Electroblade vibrating blade system. A blade shave like you've never imagined or your money back. Graphic says third, fourth. We're still actually in the third quarter, though no time remains on the clock. The quarter cannot end on a penalty, so they'll run one play and then switch ends. And if you remember before we left for that commercial, there was more than one penalty. We saw about five hankies go down, several clips on that punt return for Fresno State. Barsotti looks left side, swings it out. Number two is Dwight Pickens, the split end. 
Utah State players say incomplete. Officials do not agree it's out over the 20 yard line, and now they'll go to the other end. And we'll throw it to another commercial. <laughs> Fourth quarter coming up. Fresno State has this one going its way. Guess who has more of the year's top films, Showtime or HBO? Well, Showtime has outrageous fortune. HBO doesn't. Showtime has stakeout. HBO doesn't. Showtime has Beverly Hills Cop 2, Tin Men, Robocop. HBO doesn't. And only Showtime has exclusive rights to four of the year's top five hits. Showtime exclusives. Here you see them, there you don't. If you're planning to move, you could unpack some great savings. Because now when you move yourself with Ryder, We'll enroll you in one of the country's biggest discount shopping services, absolutely free. Which means you can buy almost anything for your new home at some of the best prices around. So after you unpack, you can unwind with some great savings. Ryder, we're there at every turn. Ever yeah, tried watching down. every right. NFL game? Miss anything? Well, someday see all the key plays from every game on ESPN's NFL Primetime. Week after week, NFL Primetime is football's finest hour with Chris Berman, Pete Axtelm, and Tom Jackson. See it all in one place. NFL Primetime. Sunday nights at 7.15 Eastern on ESPN. And here in the evening hours, it's Fresno State celebrating homecoming at Bulldog Stadium, leading by 27 as we move to the final quarter of play. Fresno State with a football on second and seven at the Dogs' 20-yard line. Marsotti with a quick drop, batted and intercepted. Picked off there by number 74 for Utah State, Rob Vandekol. A reserve nose guard after the tip by Brian Hunsaker. What a great play for a young man there, Vanderpool. Watch this, gonna see. Mom, look what I found. As the ball's batted up in the air by Brian Hunsaker. Not and bad hands. No, pretty good hands. Ugly shoes. <laughs> oh, boy, those big black high tops are really ugly, aren't they? But nice job. For Rob Vanderpool, he can tell all the folks back in Logan, hey, look, I intercepted a pass. Rob Vanderpool, a 6'3 freshman from Manteca, California. First and 10 at the 21. The Aggies have something going here with Kendall Smith in motion. They give it to the fullback, Timo Tagaloa. In the spring game, Tagaloa rushed 18 times for 131 yards and four touchdowns. He just hasn't seemed to play up to spring game expectations. That's been, it's been one of his problems, playing down to down. I mean, he'll have a couple of great plays, and then maybe he'll lay back just a little bit. Chuck Shelton calls him a sometimes distracted young man who just can't seem to always focus on the task right at hand. He got good yardage that time at second and five at the 17. At left side and almost intercepted and possibly with a chance to go all the way. Jeff White. He timed his move perfectly. This guy's got a lot of ability too because he was recruited by some pretty good football teams like the University of Washington. Perhaps they could have used him up there today. They wouldn't have lost to USC, UCLA, Texas A&M. We're talking about a highly recruited young man. Jeff White could not stop Rocky Palomari of Cal State Fullerton last week, the wide receiver. He had caught five passes for 82 yards against White, so James Williams came into the game and shut him down for the final 20 minutes. That's why he got to start here tonight. Over the middle, intercepted. 42 is Robert Nobles, and it was right to him. His second interception of the year, turnover, turnover. And Brent Snyder and the Aggies frustrated once more. Well, you got to feel bad for Brent Snyder. I just don't even think he ever saw Robert Nobles, who was a linebacker with defensive back speed. Look at that. He just hit him right in the hands with that pass, looking to try to connect on that quick slant. And now it's Nobles taking off the other way. Tracy Jenkins, number seven, the intended receiver. There he is behind the interceptor. 
actually a pretty good interception because Nobles jumped in the air, had to reach down to make the interception. So the dogs get it back, first and 10 at their 21. Straight ahead, good hard running by Daryl Rosette, the senior from San Diego. This guy's also a multi-dimensional player who can throw the football. He's thrown on the option for a touchdown this year. We've been prepared all the we've just been waiting. We've got replay cameras trained on this guy from every angle, waiting for him to throw a reverse pass. Yeah, but do you do that in a 37-10 game? Maybe they want to save it for San Jose State two weeks from now. Well, they've seen it. All the other teams in the conference have seen Fresno State use this kind of stuff before. The more things you show, the more the defense has to prepare for. A gain of eight. Make it a gain of nine on second and one. Up top, and nobody will catch this one. Bar Sodi going long for Andre Alexander, defended by Dexter Pointer. We talk about stories in this one. Turnovers for the Aggies on the road. Negative yards rushing, Fresno State. Another big night in total yards. Better than half of it passing. I tell you, Fresno State, when you look at what they have been doing tonight, trying to get that running game really up to snuff, and I think they did that this evening, but they love to throw the football here at Fresno State. It puts fans in the stands. It keeps quarterbacks happy. It recruits wide receivers. It pads statistics. Jim Sweeney likes to put that ball up. So you're going to see him, whether they're ahead 35, 37 to 10, or if it was a 1917 football game, you would see Fresno State put that football up in the air because that's what they do best. It also sends quarterbacks, wide receivers, and offensive linemen to the NFL. You bet. Wide receiver university here at Fresno State. The only loss since the start of 85 was on ESPN a year ago when San Jose State came in here and won before a record crowd. First and 10 at the 34. Rosette getting very busy. Good yardage. He's got about seven out over the 40-yard line. You know something else, Bob, about the deep passing. Some folks might say, look, Fresno State's just trying to uh, add to the score here. They're just trying to run it up on Utah State. But when you got a quarterback in there who's reading the defense, I mean, he's trained to read for the open receiver. And if he looks downfield and finds one of his receivers, Kendall Smith or whoever, running by themselves down the sidelines, he's going to throw it. That's how he's trained. Nine rushes, 31 yards for Daryl Rosette. Packing up Kelly Skipper, who has 60 yards. So they have nearly 100 yards between them tonight. It'll be another first down as Fresno State now pounding it on the ground out near midfield. So give Rosette some more yardage. And you have to admire Utah State because they're hanging in there at defense. They've been beaten deep by these big bulldog bombs tonight, but they're not giving up. They're playing hard, and it's a tribute to that gentleman right there, Chuck Shelton, who has really coached this team well, and he's going to have a winning program for a long time back at Logan. First down. Ball is at the 46. Out to the right side. A little bit tall for Alexander, but what a catch, and there he goes. Cuts it inside at the 20. Finally surrounded inside the 15. The game-breaking ability of Andre Alexander. We haven't seen all that much of little number one out here tonight. When I say little number one, he's only 5'8", 170 pounds. The senior out of San Francisco, but he makes big things happen when he gets his hands on the ball. Now look at this. A little quick hook turns into about a 45-yard gain simply because he makes the play, turns it upfield, runs away from people, spins off of people. What great instincts he showed that time. Fighting his way down inside toward the five-yard line. Looks like Kelly Skipper carrying the ball. Alexander that time showed us a tremendous instinctive move. He came down to the turf before finding the receiver visually, or rather the defender, spun to his left and went around the defender who he knew was approaching. You know, as a receiver, you have that sort of sense. I say most receivers have that sort of sense. I don't know that I ever did. But that time, just feeling where the guy was near him, and he just made the right thing. Near the goal line, looks like Eric.